Good afternoon, all audio and video techs are good for webinar. I'm going into the background.
unmuted. muted. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode, unmuted. Carlson? Here. Hertek? Here. Clendenin? Here. Henderson? Present. Vieira? Miranda? Here. Meniscalco? Here. We have a physical quorum. Thank you very much. Let's go over the agenda. We have a few continuance requests and I believe a missed notice. Yes, yes sir. Uh, I'm here to clear the agenda if needed. Go ahead. Uh, yes, first, uh, may I have a motion to open all public so hearings? Moved. Motion from Council Member Miranda, second from Council Member uh, Clendenin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, go ahead, sir. Zane Hussein, Development Coordination. Uh, I'd like to clear the agenda. First off, I'll talk about the continuances. Uh, the first item requesting continuance is agenda item number two, case TA CPA 23 05, requesting a continuance to December 14th. All right, we have a motion to uh, continue. Is there anybody here in the public that wishes to speak on the continuance only? This is item number two, correct? Correct. All right. All right, I don't see anybody uh, uh, here for the continuance to speak. We have a motion from Council Member Clendenin, second from Council Member Vieira. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, what's next? Uh, the next item requesting continuance is agenda item number four, case REZ 23-37. Also requesting a continuance to December 14th. Uh, staff uh, supports this due to a uh, site plan reconfiguration. All right. Is there anybody here that wishes to speak on this continuance? Yes, Good sir. evening, Council. Uh, yes, Steve Michelini. We requested the continuance. We also need the waiver of the 180 days. Uh, should okay. be part of your motion, please. All right. Do you have anybody in the public that wishes to speak on the continuance only for item number four? Move to continue to December 14th. Second. We have, a, 180, 180 we have a motion from Council Member Clendenin, second from Council Member Vieira. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, Mr. Hussein, I misspoke. We we continued item number three, not item number two, correct? Uh, item number two, case TA CPA 23-05. And then item number four, case REZ 23-37. Okay. And the date we requested was December 
as well. December 14th. Okay. All right. Because um, I see here, maybe this is a, a, a typo, but it says item number three, Mr. Brickemeyer. Yeah, it was continued to today from another time. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I got confused on that yeah, as well. Yeah, I was like, yeah. wait a minute. So, okay. I was like, this, they don't usually put that there. All right, so we're there. All and right, if we could have, if we could have, just for the purposes of the record, I'm sorry. Yes. We're yes. getting confused. Yeah. Hey, if we could have the, the people in the back of the bus, be quiet. <laughs> if we could have, for the purpose of the record, just the address of the location and the time again of, of these hearings on the 14th of December. 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, third floor, Tampa, Florida, 33602. And the time? 5:01 p.m. Thank you. Earth. Yes. Um, and then we have one more, sir. Uh, there is one more case that is a misnotice. That's agenda item number 12. Okay. That's case REZ 23-70. It's a misnotice and will not be heard. All right. Move to uh, motion to remove the agenda. Motion from Councilmember Miranda. Second from Councilmember Vieira. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anything else? Also, uh, one more item. Agenda item number one, DA 23-83726. Um, Staff would like this item to be after agenda item number three, and that's case REZ 22-103. All right, so we're going to start with item number three, Correct. and then we'll take item number one. Okay? Correct. Very good. That's it. So at this time, we'll start with item number three. If you're here to speak on any item on the agenda, please uh, stand up, raise your right hand, and we'll swear you in. All right, please proceed, sir. Zane Hussein, Development Coordination, Agenda Item Number Three, Case REZ 22 103. Uh, this case was continued on July 20th, 2023, and September 14th, 2023, uh, for the uh, proposed rezoning of the location 6713, 6715, and 6717 South Himes Avenue and 6604, 6610, 6612, 6614, 6616, 6618, 6602, 6606, and 6600 South Sterling Avenue. Proposed rezoning from RS 62 PD residential single family detached. I'll now pass along to our planning commission. Thank you very much. All right, planning commission. Planning commission. Sorry, confusion on our on our map. Sorry. All right, Emily Phelan, Planning Commission staff. The subject site is located within the South Tampa Planning District in the Inner Bay, south of Gandy neighborhood. The site is within uh, coastal planning area, specifically evacuation zone B. Uh, the character of the surrounding area is a mix of single family detached and single family attached uses, as you can see the attached uses here and detached along here. And there are heavy industrial uses to the west as MGDL Air Force Base is to the south. This is the adopted future land use. The site is surrounded by the residential 10 uh, future land use designation to the north, east, and south of the subject site, and this big, large gray area is the light industrial future land use designation. Um, this segment of South Himes Avenue between West Everett Avenue and West Van Buren Drive, excluding the subject site, has an existing density of 6.02 dwelling units per acre based on 16 residentially zoned sample sites. The PD proposes 10 detached single family units at the density of 4.5 dwelling units per acre which is below the anticipated density of the residential 10 future land use designation. Lot widths on this segment of South Himes Avenue are approximately 50 feet, and the proposed lot widths range from 51.2 to 79.3 feet. Given the existing block density and range of lot widths, Planning Commission staff finds the request will provide for a residential development that will be built within the existing street, block, and lot configuration of the neighborhood. The request supports many policies of the comprehensive plan as it relates to housing the city's population. The comprehensive plan encourages new housing on vacant and underutilized land to ensure an adequate housing supply is available to meet the needs of Tampa's present and future populations. 
Additionally, the site is within the McDill Air Force flight path, which limits development to 10 dwelling units per acre, and the request is consistent with the density within the flight path. Um, in conclusion, the request is comparable and compatible with the surrounding area and consistent with the development pattern encouraged on the Residential 10 future land use designation. And this concludes my presentation. Any questions? No? All right. Mr. Hussain? Zane Hussain, Development Coordination. I'll first go ahead and show the aerial view of the property. As you see the property outlined here in red, uh, to the north of the property is residential multifamily. As you see West Everett Avenue to the north, residential multifamily that's zoned RS60. To the south, you have residential single family that's zoned RS60. To the east, as you see South Himes to the east, uh, on the opposite side of the street, you have residential single family also zoned RS60. And to the west, you have um, commercial and vacant land that is zone IG and CI. I will now show the site plan provided by the applicant. The applicant proposes to rezone the property for residential single family 60 to PD plan development for the development of 10 residential single family detached units. The, the site is currently vacant at this time. The maximum building height being proposed is 34 feet and 4 inches. Vehicle, vehicle access to lots 1 through 8 come through South Sterling Avenue. And then um, uh, to the west. And then vehicle access to lots 9 through 10 come through South Himes Avenue over here to the east. The subject site contains approximately 95,470 square feet or 2.2 acres. A total of 20 parking spaces are required and 20 parking spaces are being provided to car garage for each unit. Lots one through eight face South Sterling Avenue. Here. And lots nine through 10 face South Himes Avenue to the east. Um, for the needed two continuances, there were uh, site plan modifications by the applicant for Parks and Recreation and Stormwater Department. They had requirements in order to complete the associated developer's agreement, which will be the, the case uh, presented after this. The applicant has entered into the developer's agreement for the property located to the west of the site. The agreement provides conditions for the rights of right-of-way improvements for the development. I will now show the elevations provided by the applicant. Now this is for lots, uh, you have lots one through eight facing West Sterling to the west, to the east, to the south, and to the north. Lots 9 and 10 face uh, Himes. Oh, um, you have to the west, to the east, to the south, and to the north. Okay, I'm very pixelated. As I went out to the site myself and took pictures, I will show you what I saw. As I'm right now standing on Himes, I'll show you the vacant site, uh, one small building there that will be demolished, a public notice sign right here. Another picture of the site, the vacant land. There are trees in there, which Aaron will speak on. And one more picture of the site as is. To the east of the site, we have residential single family. 
I'm still standing on Himes right now. Right. Make, clear the, clear the right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Also to the east, you have uh, another single family. In this picture, I am standing on the southwest corner oh, here. I get it. You were standing there when you took the picture. Correct. <laughs> correct. Correct. All right. Here I'm on the on the on Sterling southwest of the site. Uh, you have the Sterling uh, Street right here. To the west, you'll have that uh, vacant land. As when I took this picture, I was on Himes, looking north. You have more residential single family and also multifamily to the north. Also a picture right here to the south, single family to your left, to your right's the vacant site. In this picture, I am at the south uh, southwest corner. Uh, you have Van Buren, which is uh, running. Uh, east to west to the south of the site, and South Sterling Avenue, which is to the west of the site. I will show the site plan one more time for your convenience. There are two waivers being requested by the applicant. Uh, first waiver is to request to remove two non-hazardous grand live oaks. And the second request is to reduce the required 50% tree retention for a non-wooded lot over one acre to 37%. The development review and uh, compliance uh, staff has reviewed the application and finds the request to be consistent with the land development code. It should be the pleasure of city council to approve the application the applicant must provide revisions to the revision sheet between first and second reading. I'm here for any questions, and Aaron from Natural Resources uh, would also like to talk uh, about this case. Thank you very much. Any questions for Mr. Hussain? No? Nope. Thank you very much, sir. Thank yes, you. Yes, ma'am. Um, Aaron Mayer, Development Coordination. I'm just going to speak on some of the, the waivers that they're requesting on this site. So just to orient you here on the right is the site from the aerial image. And the darker red outline to the south is where all the grand trees are located. Um, and then so the two, there are two waivers as Zane mentioned. Um, and I'm going to go over some of those details. So first of all, the site has 43 total trees on site. Seven of the trees are grand. Uh, two are requested for removal. So the applicant is proposing to save five of the grand trees. Um, they're preserving 14 type ones and they're removing 17 type one trees. Type ones, again, are your large canopy trees like live oaks. Um, so that's for a total tree retention of 37%. Now I'm gonna confuse you with the orientation here. <laughs> um, on the right, uh, Sterling is to the west, Himes is to the east. This is your retention area. The retention pond is to the south of the site. Um, and then all the grand trees that are being preserved are in green, and the red circles are the two that are going to be removed. So this is your first grand tree the applicant had, the project has proposed to preserve. It's a live oak with a 37 inch diameter. Um, at breast height, and it's a B6. So this is by far the best rated tree on the site. Um, and the applicant, it's hard to see it, but they've you know, curved their driveway around the protective radius of the tree too. Um, so it has more than like its protective radius in most of the um, directions of the, the tree's um, protection area. 
So this tree is worth 35 mitigation type one trees. And that tree will be preserved. And this is tree 52 right here. This is the second tree that's being preserved. It's also partially on that same lot. Um, and this is a 50 inch live oak, which is multi-stem. So that's why the trunk is so large. Its condition is a C9 and it's worth 13 mitigation trees. This is the third. This is between the two backyards of uh, these two lots here. Um, and that tree is also being preserved. It's a live oak. All the trees are pretty much live oaks that are grand. And it's a 45 inch diameter rated C9 worth 26 mitigation trees. Uh, this is in the retention area, tree 36 with the 41 inch diameter at breast height live oak. Uh, condition of a C8, and this tree is also going to be preserved. They're going to contour stormwater around this tree, worth 16 mitigation trees. And the last live oak that'll be preserved is a 45-inch live oak rated C7 back here in the southeastern corner of the site. Um, at the edge of the stormwater retention area. So that tree has vines growing all over it, but it's in good condition. So for my education reasons, why did it only make us that rating? Why wasn't it rated higher? Because it's, um, I'm just curious, just for my future reference, I'm curious. <laughs> I mean, it might've been the structure. It might've been the fact that it, you know, it had vines growing all over it. They might've reduced some of the points for that reason, um, but this is what their arborist decided to rate the tree. So I don't have that exact like breakdown, but I could tell you if you really wanted to know. It might be the form, the structure of the tree with like its union, but I mean, live oaks always have multiple stems and you know branches and they're, they usually are fine. <laughs> um, all right, so here we are back to the two trees that are being removed. So we have tree 53 up here, which, is a sand live oak, which is a 34 inch diameter rated C7. Um, and this tree, the crown looked to have a lot less vigor in it. Um, potentially that could be caused from this large wound here at the base of the co-dominant stem. So it probably removed a lot of photosynthetic area of that tree. Uh, and you're seeing very little response growth. So this tree, that tree is removed um, partially, you know, due to its condition and probably all the improvements that are going to happen in the road area, it would be taking a pretty significant impact. So they're requesting a waiver for that one. And then here we have tree number 29, which is a 34 inch DBH live oak rated C7. Uh, this is worth 18 mitigation trees. And this tree is in the footprint of the house. So they're requesting a waiver for this tree. Um, I will say the applicant, you know, we met on site a few times and walked the site and looked at the trees and tried to, you know, find which ones you know, really should be preserved. And they worked with us a great deal in trying to preserve, you know, the, a lot of the best quality trees. So we do support the grand tree waivers um, due to the number of grand trees they are preserving. So they're preserving five removing two, they're requesting to remove two. The project does have 115, 15 type one tree credits. That's all the trees they're preserving. That's what their mitigation would be if they were removing them, but they're preserving them. So they have a surplus of trees. Um, and they are providing all preserved grand trees full 20 foot protective radius required by code. So natural resources is consistent with conditions. And I'm here if you have any questions. Any questions at this time? No? Thank you very much. All right. Uh, applicant, yes, sir. Good evening, Council. Clayton Brickelmeyer with Hilbert Henderson, uh, representing the applicant. Um, that was a very thorough presentation. I have very little to add. Uh, I think you can tell that my client worked extensively with, with both staff and the neighbors. The two continuances were a result of pretty extensive conversations that staff had to have to make sure we were all on the same page. At the end of the day, it's, it's 10 single family homes in a single family neighborhood. Uh, I personally think it's a really good project. Uh, we, uh, we have the, my clients are here today. If, uh, if you all have any questions, I'll just in the interest of time, 
ask for your approval. Any questions? Go ahead, sir. So uh, am, am I seeing this correctly? The only reason you're here asking for a PD as opposed to keeping with the zoning is because it's the expeditious way of getting your tree waiver. Is that correct? No, I think the, the ultimate, and, and this, is, this was a technical issue on the front end, it's, it's, it was because it's owned in one corporate entity and the lots are not are a 60 lots, um, some of the lot, you know, you heard the lot widths vary from 51 to 79. Right. It, it forced us into the code. The code sort of requires that we uh, come before you with a PD. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? All right. Do we have anybody in the public that wishes to speak on item number three? Good evening, Stephanie Pointer. Um, let me show you these guys right here. They live in South Tampa. They came to talk to us before they filed anything. They moved those, th the reason why they're not R60, they're not 60, 60 feet wide each, because they moved them to accommodate the trees. These guys spent like two hours on site with us. They really have done what development should be done correctly. Um, one of the pictures that Zane showed is one of my clients. I have about five um, single family homes that are within that area. No one has expressed any issues. This is Jean Strohmeyer's uh, area. I don't know if she signed up to speak, but um, none of the neighborhood leaders have any issues with that, this project. Um, this is a good project. And um, we're, uh, and here in a minute when we start talking about the city's property and Sterling, that is trash. The, the two or three times we've been over there, as a matter of fact, there are homeless people generally living on there. This is only an upgrade for this area. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next speaker, yes, ma'am. Hi, uh, Carol Ann Bennett. Um, I went to this site four times. I spent hours on that site looking at all the trees. I went there with other people, I went there by myself. I, I walked the site with Aaron. We looked at every single one of those trees and discussed each one in depth. Um, you know, I, the, the tree canopy is at a critical, critical stage. The city has to start treating its trees like very valuable infrastructure. But that doesn't mean every single tree can be saved or every single tree should be saved. This is a good plan. We went over it and over it. Adjustments were made. There, it, it is going to be an upgrade to the area. The density is low. Um, I think everybody is happy with the cooperation. Like she said, they came to us first. We had many discussions about it. They did it the right way. Um, so it's a good plan, and I hope you all approve it. And I just want to point out, when you saw those pictures that uh, Zane put up there, we do have ditches in South Tampa. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else? All right, uh, applicant, do you have any rebuttal? Yes, sir. Any questions from council members? May I have a motion to close? So moved. Motion from council member Miranda, second from council member Clendenin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Council member Miranda, would you like to read item number three? Number three. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item number three, file number REZ 22 103. Ordinance being presented for first reading consideration. Ordinance rezoning property in general vicinity of 6713, 6715, 6717 South Himes Avenue and 6604, 6610, 6612, 6614, 6616, 6618, 6602, 6606, and 6600. South Sterling Avenue, City of Tampa, Florida, more particularly Swap in Section 1 from Zoning District Classification, or a 60 single family to PD plan development single family, detached, providing an effective date. Revision sheet. Second. Thank you. Re with the revision sheet, uh, revision sheet is, uh, it's all wonderful, it says here. Good. We have a motion from Council Member Miranda, second from Council Member Vieira. You sound like an officer yes, over there, by the way. I am. Uh, I, um, I just wanted to take the time to say that this is the kind of development we want to see more of, working with the community, working with the city, working to save those trees by creating that um, stormwater area to the south and moving the homes up. It, we often talk about things when they don't go right, and so I just wanted to 
to point out that I really appreciate the time, effort, and energy that went into this um, to make everybody as happy as they could possibly be. Um, so thank you for that. Council, Councilman Miranda? Yeah, let me just put this on the record. The proposed uh, rezoning provides housing on vacant or underutilized land to ensure an adequate amount of housing is available to support Tampa's growing population while at the same time complying with the permitted density in the Magdi Air Force flight path consistent land use policy 2.1.2, 8.3.1, 8.3.3, 3 and 9.2.1, and housing policy 1.3.4. Uh, so this is one of uh, those that came out uh, excellent. And uh, that was uh, the compliance of goals and objective policy regarding the compliance of Land Development Code 27.136. The development has shown that the site plan promotes and encourages development that is appropriate in location, character, and compatibility with the surrounding residential zoning. The result, resulting density and lot size are consistent with the surrounding pattern of documents, of development, I mean, and development promotes the efficient, sustainability use of land with careful consideration of potential adverse impact to on-site natural elements. For example, through the proposed design requirements, removal of two non-hazardous grand tree and a reduction of tree retention. The overall site design preserves five preservation quality grant trees and exceeds the code's green space requirement by providing a total of 66,691 square feet. This amount to triple the amount required by code. We have a motion and a second. Can I get a roll call vote? Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Vertex? Yes. Condemnin? Yes. Henderson? Yes, and it's proof that South Tampa is not full. <laughs> yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on November 2nd, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. at Old City Hall, located at 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, third floor, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Thank you very much. Next is item number one. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Hello. Becca John, City Attorney's Office. Um, item number one is the proposed development agreement between the developer and the city regarding the rezoning that you just heard. So this development agreement will require that the developer construct a 20-foot wide right-of-way on the west side of the lots, which would be Sterling Avenue, um, a five-foot wide sidewalk between the lots and the right-of-way, a 10-foot wide multi-use trail on the west side of South Sterling Avenue, and then drainage swales running on each side of Sterling Avenue. Uh, the development agreement does not place any obligation on the city to make these improvements if the developer does not make them. Um, the site plan that is attached to the development agreement will be substituted out with the site plan from the second reading of the rezoning. Um, the developer is here if you have any questions. Please note that this is the first public hearing on the development agreement. The second public hearing will be held on November 2nd. Um, the resolution that's been provided with the development agreement just needs to be held until November 2nd hearing. And at the end of today's hearing on this item, I just ask that, Chair, that you announce when the second hearing will be held. Okay. Do you have any questions for me? Nope. Thank Do you. We have any questions from council? If not, may I uh, entertain a motion to move this? Well, I'm sorry. Is there anybody in the public that wishes to speak on item number one? Hi, my name is Carolyn Bennett, lifelong resident of South Tampa. I just wanted to clarify something uh, on here because I've had many conversations uh, with staff and I've come before council many times. And I, and I just wanted to take this time to explain that the, the people in South Tampa are not anti-development. Um, and, and every inch of South Tampa can be developed or redeveloped within the allowance of the code. And, Every property has certain entitlements that people can go tomorrow and they can pull permits and they're entitled to what they can do. And the only reason really that this one is for you is because it had these unique aspects to it with easements and right-of-ways and trying to change the uh, frontage of some of the homes to, for trees. If this was just strictly Euclidean and you just looked at the, at the, um, the uh, 
shoot, the distances or the perimeters of the lot, and you did the kidding, you could build more than 10 homes here, just pull permits for it. So the reason they had to do all this was because there were so many little picky, unique things about this property. But it's actually below what would have been allowed by entitlement if it wasn't such a, a unique thing. So I just want to remind everybody that, you know, we're very much in favor of what people are actually entitled to when they buy a piece of property and do their due diligence. It's just the more, 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 more that creates all the issues. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker. Um, I'd like to point out, because when we say South Tampa's full, 99% of the properties that people are trying to build something on aren't residential to start with. They want to take our commercial and industrial. We don't have a gas station. We don't have a grocery store. We're a food desert. Not that fluffy word that people want to use. So let's please remember this was always residential. And um, honestly, I'm not kidding you. The city was negligent on keeping up this, this piece of sterling. It was a dirt road, and it was covered in filth. There were needles out there. There was all kinds of stuff where the homeless were living out there. And the whole rest of the way down, all the way until you get to the, the park property by Gadsden Park, many, many times has been an issue. One of the trashiest houses down there I rented. I mean, like the lady was paying $1,000 a month, and it was almost inhabitable. But she had to have a house. And honestly, the, the city was negligent on keeping up with that property. And it was their property. So in this case, we are making a huge, they are making a huge improvement on that property for all of the neighbors by doing this. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I support it. But I don't want, I don't want people to get confused because I don't, want com I don't want to see anymore, let's go take our commercial land and make it residential, 35 units an acre. That's not okay. This was always residential. And you saw the little house on a giant lot. We all wondered about it. And every single solitary person that I've talked to about it, I'm like, hey, you know that place on Himes with the little silver house in the middle of that huge lot? And they're like, yeah. They, they, everybody knows about this. And everybody knows it's underutilized, including the neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. There's another uh, question. May I have a motion to so close? close? All right, we have a motion to close from Councilman Vieira. Do we have a second? Second, Councilman Moran, all in favor? Aye. 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 May I have a We have a motion. Second public hearing will be scheduled for November 2nd, 2023, at 10 30 a.m., located at the Old City Hall, third floor. 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Thank you very much. All right, item number five. Zane Hussein, Development Coordination. <clears throat> Agenda number five, case REZ 23-54. This is for the location at 4307 West Fig Street. Proposed rezoning from RS50 residential single family to RM18 residential multifamily. I'll now pass along to our planning commission. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Emily Phelan, planning commission staff. Uh, the subject sites within the West Shore Planning District and the West Shore Palms neighborhood. Uh, the surrounding area is primarily single family detached that you can see here as well as further on Gray Street and uh, some commercial <coughs> along there. Um, uh, the West Shore Plaza Mall is approximately three blocks to the west. This is the adopted future land use map. The dark gray, uh, excuse me, the dark brown is residential 35 and the light brown is the residential 20 designation. Planning Commission staff reviewed the application and found no adverse impacts to the surrounding neighborhood. This portion of West Fig Street between North Hubert Avenue and North Manhattan Avenue, excluding the subject site, has an existing density of 5.77 units per acre based on five sample sites. Uh, through 
the north portion, though the north portion of West Fig Street is primarily developed with single family detached uses, there are newly constructed townhomes on the block developed under the RM18 zoning district, which I did point out in the aerial. Um, Planning Commission staff finds the request will allow for development that is comparable and compatible with the surrounding area. The request supports many policies in the comprehensive plan as it relates to housing the city's population. The comprehensive plan encourages new housing on vacant and underutilized land to ensure an adequate housing supply is available to meet the needs of Tampa's future and current population. Land use policy 9.2.6 encourages single family attached and multifamily developments to be designated to include the orientation of the front door to a neighborhood sidewalk and street. The applicant should address this policy as well as all applicable policies at the time of permitting. The proposed RM18 zoning would allow for development that is comparable and compatible with the character of the surrounding development pattern and is consistent with the long range development pattern encouraged under the residential 20 future land use designation. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Any questions? No? Yes, sir. Hussein Hussein, Development Coordination. I'll first go ahead and show the aerial view of the property. As you see, the property is right here outlined in red. To the um, east side, you have North Hubert Avenue. Uh, to the east is zone RS50 and PD. There's a single family home. And then also there's residential multifamily to the east. Uh, to the south, you have West Fig Street. Uh, also to the south is RS50. You have residential multifamily there and also a place of religious assembly. To the west, to the west, you have uh, zone RS50 and RM18. Uh, there is a residential single-family home and also residential single-family attached to the west. And then also to the north, you have a PD, which is townhomes right here. The total lot acreage here is 0 0.24 acres. The maximum building height is at 35 feet in height. The existing use on the property is a residential single family home. Uh, the property is located within the West Shore Tampa uh, International Airport Planning District. And as you see around, you have residential multifamily, single family, and uh, townhomes in the uh, existing area. I will now show you the elevations provided, or I'm sorry, the uh, pictures I took on site. As you see the site as is with our residential single family home there. To the east of the site, you have residential single family and also residential multifamily. To the south of the site, you have residential multifamily. To the east of the site, you have residential single family and also townhomes and residential multifamily to the uh, east. And to the west of the site, you have residential single family, you have townhomes, and then the next block over, you have residential multifamily as well. I will show you the aerial view of the property one more time. The development review and compliance staff has reviewed the application and finds the request to be consistent with the land development code. I'm here for any questions. Any questions? Nope, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, do we have an applicant? Uh, uh, yes. I believe there's one online. Sir, raise your right hand, turn your uh, camera on. We have to swear you in. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. you Go may ahead, sir. Hand. Please state your name. Uh, my name is C. Wing Lee. I'm the single um, uh, member uh, owner of Red Falcon LLC, which owns the property. Um, uh, I, I don't have that much more to add except that uh, I will be following all zoning laws. If 
if I do get the rezoning to RM18, uh, any future land use. Um, the only thing additional that I do want to say is that uh, I, I don't live in Florida today, but I, I have property and invest in Florida, and I choose to invest my capital in the state of Florida because I believe uh, in, in, uh, in the state of Florida, uh, no income tax, et cetera, and I certainly want to retire there. So uh, I plan to continue to build uh, and invest my capital in, in property here. And so I would love to uh, get the approval for, uh, for uh, a rezoning to develop and add more uh, living space for the growth of the population. So that's the only thing I want to add. And you know, any future units uh, that I plan to develop here will, will follow uh, all zoning uh, district standards. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions for the applicant? No, do we have anybody in the public that wishes to speak on item number five? There's nobody else registered. Would you like to say anything else, sir? No, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. May I have a motion to close the public mm -hmm. hearing? Second. Motion for Councilmember Moran, second for Councilmember Vieira. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Councilman Vieira? Yes, sir. I move um, an ordinance being presented for first reading consideration. An ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 4307 West Fig Street, City of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in Section 1 from Zoning District Classification, RS50 Residential Single Family to RM18 Residential Multifamily, providing an effective date and I find the applicant has met its burden of proof to provide competent substantial evidence that the rezoning is consistent with the comprehensive plan and code or plan and city code. I also adopt the findings and reasoning of the planning commission and staff reports as uh, stated previously. Thank you very okay. much. We have a second. Second. Second from council member Miranda. Roll call vote. Miranda. Yes. Carlson. Yes. Hertek. Yes. Clendenin. Yes. Henderson. Yes. Vieira. Yes. Maniscalco. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on November 2nd, 2023 at 5, excuse me, at 9.30 a.m. at Old City Hall, located at 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, third floor, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Thank you very much. Yes, sir, Mr. Hussein, item number six. Zane Hussein, Development Coordination. Agenda item number six, case REZ 23-69. This is being a proposed rezoning at the location 5301 and 5215 West Tyson Avenue. Proposed rezoning from PD and IH to PD residential multifamily, retail sales, specialty goods, convenience goods, shoppers goods, and marina. I'll now pass it along to our planning commission. Yes, sir. Thank you. Emily Phelan, Planning Commission staff. The subject site's located within the South Tampa Planning District in the Gandhi Sun Bay South neighborhood. Uh, the site is, is within the coastal high hazard area and evacuation zone A. Um, the surrounding area is in transition. Uh, historically, Rattlesnake Point has been developed with industrial uses and those have since progressively through multiple rezonings have transitioned out of the industrial uses, but some industrial uses still do exist to the south of the site. And, and to the east of the site as well. And multifamily residential uses are located to the west as well as some commercial uses. This is the future land use of the subject site. It is designated by the community mixed use 35. And these two areas right here are the heavy industrial designation. All the rest of them are CMU 35. The subject site is within a mixed-use corridor, and the project can utilize floor area ratio for mixed-use projects within the South Tampa Planning District. The applicant is using FAR to determine the maximum building potential and, propose, and proposes a 0.84 FAR, which is under the maximum intensity allowed under the CMU 35 designation. All proposed uses are consistent with the underlying future land use designation. Specific policy guidance in the comprehensive plan provides for items that must be addressed through a PD rezoning on a property designated CMU 35 within the Rattlesnake Point waterfront area. The applicant is proposing a PD and not proposing or expanding industrial uses, which is consistent with land use policies 8.11.1 through 8.11.3. 
Per general note 13, a public pathway will be gated but open daily to the public and connects to the adjacent property to the west along the waterfront consistent with land use policies 8.11.4 and 8.11.5. The PD addresses land use policy 8.11.6 by providing transportation by providing a transportation note stating that prior to issuance of the first building permit for both the north and south phase, a mitigation payment will be paid for improvements in the inner bay district area. Finally, the rezoning addressed land use policy 8.11.7 by providing general note 8 stating that prior to issuance of building permits, the developer shall be required to mitigate shelter space. Um, typically within mixed use districts, interest assisted townhomes and multifamily residential uses are to be oriented towards the right of way. The proposed site plan addresses the mixed use corridor policies by providing internal pedestrian connections from the buildings to West Tyson Avenue. The request supports many policies in the comprehensive plan as it relates to housing the city's population. It provides additional housing in the in the neighborhood and also encourages new housing on vacant and underutilized land to ensure an adequate housing supply is available to meet the needs of Tampa's present and future populations. The plan development is consistent with the density and intensity anticipated under the Community Mixed Use 35 future land use designation. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Any questions? All right. Yes, sir. I'll first go ahead and show the aerial view of the property. As you see the property here outlined in red to the north of the property, you have that rattlesnake channel there, zoned uh, IG. To the south, you have industrial, which is zoned IH. To the east, you have federal use, um, military use to the east, which is zoned IH. And to the west uh, is a PD, and that is um, for residential single family attached, retail sales, shoppers, goods, and restaurants. Speaking a little bit of this site, the site is located on the north side of West Tyson Avenue, as you see Tyson here. Uh, the site has a lot area of 14.91 uh, acres. The north phase has 9.87 acres here, as you see, and the south phase has 5.04 acres to the south. The site is currently zoned PD. Plan development, uh, which was approved for REZ 20-66, um, and is surrounded to the southeast and IH um, that's surrounded to the I southeast, and with also with IH zoning, industrial heavy zoning, to the south. Here, um, case REZ 20-66 was approved for residential multifamily for 226 units, retail sales, specialty goods convenience goods, and shopper's goods, and also for marina uses. This PD was first denied on January 21st, 2021, and this went to a FUDRA hearing. Changes were made to the site plan, and it was approved later on March 24th, 2022, uh, for just the north phase, phase one. This request, request includes the addition of the south phase as identified on the site plan, as I'll show you, to the south. Uh, as I'll show you the site plan now. Yeah. This PD, REZ 23-69, is for residential multifamily for 401 units. North phase will have 325 units, and the south phase will have 76 units. It's also uh, rezoning for uh, retail sales, specialty goods, convenience goods, shopper's goods, and also marina uses. The applicant is proposing two, uh, two residential multifamily structures to the north and six residential multifamily structures to the south. The proposed building uh, floor area on the north phase is 456,200 square feet in the buildings and 152,300 square feet in the garage. The proposed building floor area to the south phase is 85,600 square feet in the buildings. The applicant has added a note to the site plan 
that they are unable to apply for a substantial change consideration. Should council approve this PD uh, site plan, any changes proposed from the approved, or sorry, any, um, should uh, council approve the PD site plan, any changes proposed regarding density or intensity from the approved PD site plan will require a new PD site plan approval and must be heard before city council. Uh, looking at the site here, vehicular access uh, to the site comes from West Tyson to the south. The proposed maximum building uh, height on the north phase is 60 feet in height and uh, the south phase is 50 feet in height. The applicant is required to have 754 parking spaces and they are providing 759 parking spaces. I will now show you the elevations provided by the applicant. You see the elevations to the west, elevations to the north, elevations to the east, and elevations to the south. That's the north phase. Now looking at the south phase. Look at elevation to the west. Zoom out a little bit. To the north. To the east. And to the south. I will show you the uh, pictures I took on site myself. A lot of the site is not accessible at this time, but I took uh, pictures of uh, the outside. So this is the site as is. Another picture where the site is. Looking uh, at the site and also to the south. Uh, here I am on Tyson, looking to the south. There's a marine there. Another picture of that marine to the south. If you go about 100 yards to the west, you have Solchak. A picture of the uh, PD to the west. And one more picture uh, to the west. I will show you the site plan one more time. <clears throat> there is one waiver being requested, and that's to request to reduce the minimum tree retention requirement from 50% to 27%. Development Review and Compliance staff has reviewed the application and finds the overall request to be consistent with the Land Development Code. Should it be the pleasure of City Council to approve the application, the applicant must provide revisions to the revised revision sheet between first and second reading. I'm here for any questions. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. The uh, storage tanks that you showed on one of those pictures, where are they at? Uh, let's see. Storage tanks uh, on site. Are they are they on the site so they can be removed for this project? Yeah, those those uh, are Correct. those are those on the site? Correct, and those will be uh, removed for the okay. PD. Okay, I just need to know. Thank you. Of course. All right. Thank you very much. All right, applicant.
Well, good evening. For the record, Kevin Reale with Stearns Weaver Miller, 401 East Jackson Street uh, for the applicant. And uh, the property is actually owned by two owners, so uh, we have the applicant and the other property owner here with us. We also have representatives from the engineering team uh, for civil and uh, transportation. Um, staff already went over the general location of the site. To start big picture here, uh, there, there's a lot of history here, and I think that the history of the transition around Snake Point is, is almost more applicable than this um, rezoning, because what this rezoning is requesting is, is compatible with the change that has happened out there. Um, and what this application does is it rezones the chemical formulator site, the last real heavy industrial uh, use that's out there, so that the residential development coming in doesn't have to deal with the, the risk of chemical formulators that ex uh, exist there. And uh, I'm switching out of the presentation mode here because I'm going to use the cursor. I, I assume you all can see the cursor? Yeah. So um, the transition to CMU 35 has been happening. It started in the early um, or in the mid-2000s and then stopped for a while because of the economy and then really started again about five years ago. Um, and so you can see most of the site is, uh, or most of Rattlesnake Point is CMU 35. The two remaining areas that are not CMU 35 are the Army, uh, yeah, I'm calling it the Army Depot here, but it's the Army property, and then uh, Port 32 and Hula Bay. Those are not incompatible uh, uses there, and they're also not likely to change. So the, as far as the future land use is concerned, we might be done transitioning to CMU 35 on Rattlesnake Point. Um, and with that transition, two of the five properties are under construction. So uh, this property over here, you already have a parking garage that's uh, vertical and foundation is being worked on. That's the Alliance project. And then down here in the southwest, you have the, the MAA project, which has vertical construction taking place. Um, two of the other projects that have been approved in the last um, five years are in permitting. So you know the, the uh, applicant actually owns this property here as well. It's going to be part of the larger project. They're in the beginning stages of permitting here. And then the other owner here, um, uh, Tyson Tampa, is actually far along the permitting process and that may seem counterintuitive because we're here for a rezoning, but the two rezonings work, th this application works so closely that um, it's going to take very minor modifications to that plan to, um, to accommodate the new zoning. And so what we're trying to show here is how that transition has, um, has really occurred and is um, starting to wrap up at this point. And so for the new council members here, when the applicant first came in for the rezoning of the property to the west that was approved back in uh, 22, they showed this vision, which was uh, a vision to get rid of those incompatible uses and to redevelop the site uh, in, uh, in compatibility uh, across the, the site where you have the lower density, uh, single family attached and or uh, lower, um, lower story multifamily along Tyson, and then you have the multifamily apartment buildings along the water. Um, and what they've done in the interim is they bought the chemical formulators property. Well, that was very expensive. Chemical formulators knew that they had a captive audience, and so they had the ability to, to charge a lot. And so this process here, uh, the two neighbors are working together to, to maximize the utility of the property to, to uh, you know, recoup some of the costs to uh, purchase and buy out chemical formulators. And so that's where we are with number three here today to rezone that portion of the property. And it includes the property to the north because they're going to work together to, to um, have a unified development plan and then they'll develop separately. Um, and then we're also working with the city staff on a funding mechanism for a public park. And then right away improvements and signal improvements, uh, prop share payments for all of those are worked into all of these applications. Even the initial ones that, that talked about prop share payments when warranted, those are warranted now. And so as those projects move forward, they'll be making those payments. So uh, I'll, I'll skip this slide, but just briefly to, to show what Zane put on uh, the record there, where the north property is REZ 2066. That was a rezoning that went through a fluter uh, process with the city. And then, of course, we're focused on chemical formulators here. Um, it, it's important to, to note that the fluter, though, I, you know, there are, I, I can't speak for council because some of you were, were sitting behind the dais then, but one of the biggest concerns was CFI, the incompatibility and the danger if there's something that happens there or if there are issues with evacuation based on that. And of course, we're removing that problem. Um, and you know, if you can see, we don't have a big crowd tonight and one of the reasons is because as this transition completes, the controversy um, really goes away because we have compatibility on Rattlesnake Point. 
So the existing zoning uh, per, uh, permits 226 multifamily units, 5,000 square feet of retail with marina slips. You can see the parking garage on the south side here is exposed, and that's because the, the, the goal was to have this new rezoning come in, and the new building will wrap around that parking garage and, and hide that parking garage. Um, so the coordination of that vision, you can see that top circle there, that's the expansion of that existing zoning. Those buildings come south of the parking garage, around 100 units go, go in that area, and that density comes from the CFI parcel. So it's not, it's not using any additional uh, entitlements from the existing zoning. And then the remaining entitlements uh, are for the, the multifamily uses to the south. The site overall is just under 27 dwelling units to the acre. CMU 35 permits up to 30, but Rattlesnake Point is essentially developed right at that 27 number all the way across, and we respected that number in this application as well. So now, all that time, and I'm just now to the request. The request is relatively straightforward. You're, you're going to have two phases. The phases are not for timing purposes. They're, they're really more focused on separating the development. The pink area is the expansion of the existing zoning. It'll permit uh, 325 units, 5,000 square feet of retail, and there's a few more marina slips at, at 25. As I mentioned, the, the 325 units represents about a 100 unit increase from what's there today, and those units will fit on the, the portion of the building in the, the south of the parking garage there. And then the south phase will have 76 multifamily units. Um, and then the, the boundary gets adjusted. It's going to be a nice straight line in between. That doesn't really matter for your decision today, but that's just the coordination between the parties. Um, this is, I just picked one elevation to show, right? The, the, the building to the north is uh, a taller building. This is what you're going to see closer to Tyson, something in this scale. Um, we are asking for one waiver. It's the only waiver on the site. Uh, but there's a little background to it, and we do have staff support for this waiver. So first, keep in mind, this is an industrial site. It's kind of hard to see in the picture. I should have zoomed in more, but you know, those trees there are wrapped around a, an existing tank, right? Uh, a storage tank for chemicals. Um, the, this is not a site, an area known for nice trees because it's an industrial area. Uh, now, there are, certainly are some healthy trees on site, but there are no grand trees. And the, the current zoning actually permits removal of most of the trees we're proposing to remove. Um, and we worked with staff, and it just made more sense to, to uh, show the, the trees the way we had them set up in the, the prior zoning and now, rather than show some interim change. But as that uh, permitting process goes forward, those trees would be permitted to come out anyway. Um, so Natural Resources, uh, you know, we worked with Erin. She went on site, she looked at the data, and she reviewed the landscape plan because we're in for permitting. And because the landscape plan proposes so many more uh, trees than what's there now. Um, you know, this is going to be one of those rare cases where even though we're requesting a waiver, it's going to be better than what exists today. Um, so we're consistent with, uh, with all the departments. Uh, we're consistent with the code, the comprehensive plan. And so with that, I'll, I'll respect the rest of your time and ask if you have any questions. Any questions? All right. Anybody in the public wish to speak on this item? This is item number six. Hi, my name is Caroline Bennett, lifelong resident of South Tampa. Um, this has been one long, bumpy road. Um, the first time I appeared before council talking about Rattlesnake Point was four years ago. Some of you have been on this entire bloody journey with us. <laughs> um, Rattlesnake Point was commercial. I mean, I grew up near there. It was always commercial. People had good jobs there, uh, five minutes from their house. And the neighborhood and the community wanted to preserve that because there was a big benefit to having that commercial property. You had a, a railroad spur, you had a, a port, you had, it, it was very valuable. Um, but there was money to be made by converting it to, to residential. And we fought, we fought it every inch of the way. We did everything we could and we, we lost, but we were able to make things better. They came up every time something was approved. It was a better plan than the original plan, and it was more palatable. And I thank city council for that, because the city council was the ones who made that possible by holding them to a higher standard. You held every one of those developers to a higher standard, and we appreciate that. Um, Southeastern has done everything right. 
They came to the community, they came to the Gandhi Civic Association, there was 35 people there, they brought a television, they did their presentation, they answered every question everybody had, they listened to us when we asked for some affordable county housing units. At first, they're like, I don't know how we can do it, but we'll try. We'll look, crunch the numbers. They came back. They figured out how to do it. Um, they've just been wonderful. They've been talking to us the whole way. Um, once we lost the battle for keeping the jobs and keeping the commercial, um, we realized we needed to do something about CFI because it's the uh, Homeland Security says uh, chlorine plants as like the number one target of terrorists. We had to do something about it. And Southeastern had the plan. So we, I cannot tell you how happy I am that we, we got to the other side of this. Um, Southeastern is gonna have a private park, but they want it to be a public park and we want it to be a public park too. In 2006, a traffic study was done of that area. 2006, 17 years ago, they said a traffic light was needed at the corner of Tyson and West Shore. And when the proposals first started coming in for thousands of units on Rattlesnake Point, the people who live there were going crazy. What about the traffic? What about this? What about that? They're going to live with the nightmare of construction. They're going to live with the nightmare of the increased tra uh, traffic. What they want, they should get something for it. A public park, a greenway where the old railroad spur was, the boardwalk, um, at least that way they, the traffic light, they'll get something because this is going to bring in oodles of property taxes, and so we're hoping some of it can go back to the people who were paying the price for that development. But I urge you to vote yes for this. Southeastern has done a great job with this. Thank, Thank you very much. Next speaker. Good evening, Stephanie Pointer. Um, I'm working on the DOD. Every time you see our lovely Congresswoman, please tell her to move that reserve unit onto the base and build housing there for our military, because we need it. At, we need it for McDill. Um, if you notice, they've got these giant house plans. They're for bigger units, and that's one of the things that we ask for. And when Carol Ann said something about affordable, phase one has 30 affordable units that was not negotiated by anybody but the neighborhood um, and Southeastern. So, um, and when Carol Ann says this has been a long and bunkby road, guess what? The first one on Rattlesnake Point was uh, four years ago on the 19th of October or November. Um, I, you know, 27 units an acre is what we are sticking with, and we're happy to have it. Um, we didn't want the, the pork chop shake stuff at all because they wanted to put it next door to a chlorine plant. And Southeastern came in and said, we'll get rid of the chlorine plant. What? Um, you can't be happier about that. Um, I, like I said, uh, I, I'm a happy camper tonight. And when Carol Ann said it's a long and bumpy road, every one of you have been on a site visit when you're doing a SOG tour, and it was the bumpiest road we went down. It literally tore the suspension out of my vehicle. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Go yes. Anybody else? Anybody else wish to speak? No? Uh, do you have any rebuttal applicants? No? Anybody on council? No? May I have a motion to close? We have a motion to close from Councilmember Clendenin, second from? Miranda. Second from Councilman Moran. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, yes, Councilwoman Henderson, item number six. Yes, and thank you, Chair. Revision sheet yes, there well. is. I move ordinance number, file number REZ. 23-54, no, is that right? 69. No, 69, 23-69, 69. as the applicant has met its burden of proof to provide competent and substantial evidence that the development has, I should read this part first. Just read this I can do, ordinance right This here. is my first time doing this guy. Yeah, right. Just the ordinance part, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good, and then I read the reasons. Yes, ma'am. Gotcha. Okay. I move file number REZ 2369, an ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 5301 and 5212 West Tyson Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one from zoning district classifications PD plan development and IH industrial heavy to PD plan development residential multifamily retail sales specialty convenience goods, shopper's goods, and marina providing an effective date. Second. 
Um, now I do this part, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I find that the, um, I also adopt the findings and reasons of the planning commission and city staff reports for compliance of um, the proposed development is consistent with the anticipated intensity of the community mixed use 35 future land use um, designation consistent with land use policy 8.14.1. Also, compliance with the Land Development Code 27-136 um, proposed development had, as shown on the site plan promotes or encourages development that is appropriate in location, character, and compatibility with the surrounding neighborhood as noted in staff reports. This area has been transitioning from a heavy industrial working waterfront to mixture of industrial, residential, and commercial uses. And then the waivers compliance in section 27-139-4, such as the design of the proposed development is unique and therefore in need of a waiver. The requested waiver will not substantially interfere with or injure the rights of others whose property would be affected by these waivers. And then I also, um, this includes the revision sheet. And this includes the revision sheet. Lots of details in this one. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Councilman Miranda, roll call vote. Carlson? Yes. Hertak? Yes. Plindenen? Yes. Henderson? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Miniscalco? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on November 2nd, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. located at the Old City Hall 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, third floor, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Thank you very much. Yeah. Item number seven. Zane Hussein, Development Coordination. Agenda item number seven, case REZ 23-72. There's a proposed rezoning at the location 2302 South Arowana Avenue. Proposed rezoning from RM16 Residential Multifamily to PD Planned Development Residential Single Family Attached. Pass along to our planning commission. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Um, Emily Phelan, planning commission staff. Uh, the subject site is located within the Central Tampa Planning District in the Bayshore Gardens neighborhood. It is within the coastal high hazard area and evacuation zone A. This is an aerial of the subject site, which is located right here. And the surrounding area has a mix of residential types with single family attached and detached as well as multifamily. This is the adopted future land use. This subject site is here. As you can see, it is surrounded by the residential 10 future land use, residential 20 future land use designation, excuse me. And then further north uh, west is residential 10. The residential 20 designation promotes multifamily and attached single family uses. The comprehensive plan encourages infill development to provide an adequate amount of land for residential development to provide for Tampa's growing population. The site is near transit options, employment, and entertainment options, which would be suitable for increased housing. South Arowana Avenue and West Tennessee Street have been developed with single family attached and multifamily dwelling units. The average existing density along this segment is 14.86 dwelling units per acre. If approved, the site would be developed at 16.6 dwelling units, which is consistent with the residential 20 designation. The comprehensive plan encourages single family attached developments to be designed to include the orientation of the front door to a neighborhood sidewalk and street. Entrances to two of the units are oriented towards South Arowana Avenue and the remaining units face West Tennessee Street with clear pedestrian pathways to the sidewalk meeting the intent of land use policy 9.2.6. The request supports many policies in the comprehensive plan as it relates to housing the city's population. The request provides additional housing in the Bayshore Gardens neighborhood. The comprehensive plan encourages new housing on vacant and underutilized land to ensure an adequate amount an adequate housing supply is available to meet the needs of Tampa's present and future populations. Overall, the plan development is consistent with the policy direction of the comprehensive plan and the PD engages the public realm and provides safe pedestrian connections. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Any questions? All right, Mr. Hussein. 
I'll go ahead right now and show the aerial view of the property. As you see the property here outlined in red, uh, let's see, to the south you have Bayshore Boulevard, to the north you have the Crosstown, uh, directly north of the site you have West Tennessee Avenue, uh, zone RM16, residential single family attached, to the south RM16, residential single family attached, as you see, of West Maryland Avenue, uh, to the west you'll have RM16, residential single family attached, and to the east you'll have residential single family attached, also zoned RM16. I will now show the site plan provided by the applicant. As you see the site here, the applicant is proposing three residential um, single-family attached units. The property is located at the southeast corner of West Tennessee Avenue and also South Arowana Avenue. Vehicular access to the site comes uh, to Unit A from West Tennessee Avenue. And units B and C comes from South Arowana Avenue. The maximum building height is proposed at 43 feet and 5 inches. The total lot area here, I'll zoom out a little bit. Total lot area here is 8,023 square feet or 0 0.18 acres. Uh, the existing use on the site is residential single family. A total of seven parking spaces are required and the applicant is providing seven parking spaces. I will now show you the elevations provided by the applicant. The elevation to the north, to the south, to the west, And to the east. As I went out on site, I will show you what I saw. This is uh, a view of the site as is. I'm on Arowana at this time. Another picture of the site public notice sign in the front. And one more picture of the site. In this picture, I am on Tennessee, looking from the north to the site. In this picture, I'm on Tennessee, looking to the northeast of the site. In this picture, I'm on Arowana, looking north of the site. In this picture, I'm on Arowana, also looking west of the site, residential single family attached. And here I'm looking south of the site, residential, single family attached. I'll show the site plan one more time. And I did confirm with uh, Aaron from Natural Resources uh, this tree that everyone saw the picture of will be staying on site, so that will not be demolished, just uh, to let you know in advance. The applicant is requesting one waiver, and that's to reduce the required five-foot use-to-use landscape buffer to one foot to the south. In, in doing so, development review and compliance staff has reviewed the application and finds the overall review to be consistent with the land development code. Should be the pleasure of city council to approve this application, the applicant must provide revisions to the revision sheet between first and second reading. I'm here for any questions. Any questions? Nope. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, applicant, would you like to present?
Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of council. I'm John LaRocca, Murphy LaRocca Consulting Group, representing the applicant owner, Caramia Capital, LLC. Uh, as I've said before, and as you heard tonight, the staff does a very uh, thorough job presenting the case before you. Planning Commission does a very good job. I won't repeat that because that's the presentation I would make. I will simply say everything for this particular request is based on the tree. I'll uh, place the site plan again on the drawing. The reason why we requested a plan development zoning was to allow for adjustments on the site. The area, uh, the proposal was totally in character and consistent with the surrounding community. Uh, from a planning perspective, there's no, in my opinion, there's no argument about that consistency. It's all about the tree. It's a beautiful tree if anybody has, we saw some pictures here tonight, but if you've seen the tree, it was important to the applicant, important to the community. Uh, there's been really no uh, inquiries. I had one phone call after the notices went out and it was all about saving the tree. And it's been assured through this plan development zoning that that tree has been saved. And some of the adjustments we've had to make to that site, including the waivers, has been to accommodate uh, protection of that tree. It was important to the applicant, certainly important to the community, and certainly important to the uh, city from its uh, purpose of uh, saving those trees that are very important to the city. Uh, I'll show you one more picture for consistent uh, photo for consistency. It's an aerial photo of the site. You've seen various versions of this in the previous presentations by the Planning Commission and uh, uh, the uh, Zoning Office. Uh, but this is uh, uh, taken from the property appraiser showing all the property ownership lines in a bit more detail. And you can see that uh, the majority, if not all of the area, except for one or two of the parcels, remnant parcels of single-family homes, the area is essentially all multifamily uh, or single-family attached and multifamily uses in the area. Uh, we concur with the uh, revision sheet uh, requirements between first and second reading should you approve this zoning this evening and we respectfully request that you consider this for uh, approval and uh, consistency with your long-range plans. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions for the applicant? No? Anything else, sir? Mr. Hussein? Yeah. Zane Hussein, Development Coordination. Talking to uh, my natural resources, Aaron, um, for that removal of the parking space to the south, uh, with doing that, they can actually remove that one waiver that they have requested. So that could be removed with removal of that parking space, uh, as per Aaron. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, anything else? If not, we will go to the public. Is there anybody here that wishes to speak on item number seven? Item number seven. Uh, applicant, do you have any rebuttal? Anything else you'd like to add? No, I don't. No. Could I just ask, yes. uh, Mr. Chair Mr. Yes, Chairman? Sir. Yes, Martin Shelby, City Council Attorney. With regard to what Mr. Hussein said, with regard to moving that item, does that have to be done between first and second reading? And does the and does the petitioner agree well, to that? Well, I guess my question is, we'll look at that. I'm, we've got the design architect here, uh, Mr. Schuler. Uh, Ralph, would you like to just is it fine to make that adjustment? Okay. We're, we're fine with, with making that adjustment. So if that you. could be part of the motion, please. All right, between first and second reading. All right, anything else? If not, may I have a motion to close? So move. Motion from Council Member Miranda, second from Council. Marty, I have a question. Um, if I mean, if that's that seems like a marketplace decision, if they want to move that. Right now, it seems like we could just go forward with leaving it in yeah. place with the waiver. Well, the question is, is that a site plan controlled issue? I, I don't have a problem with the waiver. I don't have a I mean, problem with the waiver either. Wells Legal Department, the revision sheet already addresses that one adjustment between first and second reading. So I just wanted staff to come up here and clarify that um, the waiver that staff had represented was required actually will be removed because of the changes between first and second reading. So the reading. intent is to remove the parking space and remove the waiver. That's my understanding. Okay, very good. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Anything else? May I have a and, motion I, and I concur with that for the okay. record. Motion closed. From Councilman Moran, do you have a second? Second, Council Member Clendenin, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, any opposed? Uh, Council Member Clendenin, would you mind reading item number seven and yeah. include the revision sheet? Well, we'll go. I move file number REZ2372, an ordinance being presented for first reading consideration. An ordinance for rezoning property in general vicinity of 2302 South Arowana in the city of Tampa, Florida, and in more particularly described in section one, from zoning district classifications RM16 residential multifamily to PD plan development residential single family uh, attached, providing effective date including revision sheet 
I find that the, um, uh, in accordance with section 27136, that the development as shown on the site plan promotes and encourages the development that is appropriate in location, character, and compatibility with the surrounding residential zoning. The resulting density and the lot sizes are consistent with the surrounding pattern of development. In addition, in accordance with 27139.4, such as the requested waiver will not substantially interfere with or injure the rights of others whose property would be affected by the waiver, which I guess is no longer applicable because we're not doing the waiver, right? Second. Okay, very good. We have a motion from Councilmember Clendenin, second from Councilmember Miranda. Question from Councilwoman Hertag. Uh, not a question, just a statement again, um, just to, to say thank you. Uh, this is again the kind of development we want to see. The, the doors are facing the street. There's movement. Um, you could have done this without a PD, but you saw the tree, which is beautiful. You knew the neighbors. Um, you talked to the, the, um, the, the community and the city and worked this out. And again, I just want to say thank you when people do the right thing. And it comes to us having gone through every single step. We really greatly appreciate it. And so that's all I wanted to say. Roll call vote. Hertek? Yes. Clendenin? Yes. Henderson? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on November 2nd, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. located at Old City Hall, 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, third floor, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Thank you very much. All right, item number eight. Zang Hussein, Development Coordination. Agenda item number eight, case REZ 23-75. This is for the location 4914 South McDill um, Avenue and 3013 West Marlin Avenue. Proposed rezoning from CG Commercial General and RS75 Residential Single Family to PD Pine Development Restaurant. I'll now pass it along to our Planning Commission. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Emily Phelan, Planning Commission staff. The subject site is located within the South Tampa Planning District and the Ballast Point neighborhood. The site is located within the Coastal Planning Area and Evacuation Zone B. Here's an aerial of the subject site, which is located here. And the surrounding area has a mix of both commercial and residential uses. The commercial uses can more or less be found along Gandy Boulevard and down some of South McDill, and it transitions to residential both to the southwest and the east of the subject site. This is the adopted future land use of the subject site, which is here. A portion of the subject site is within the community mixed use 35, and then the other portion of the subject site is located with the residential 10, and the community mixed use follows West Gandy Boulevard as well as South McDill, and it, then it transitions into the residential 10. Uh, Single-use commercial uses, such as a restaurant, can be considered in the community mixed use 35 per the consistency matrix in the, in the land use in the land development code. The proposed request is well below the intensity anticipated within the CMU 35 designation, and a parking lot is proposed on the residential 10 portion of the subject site, while the restaurant is on the CMU 35 portion of the subject site. The CMU 35 portion of the site is within a mixed-use corridor. The comprehensive plan promotes a development pattern that encourages walking and transit through building design and pedestrian amenities. The comprehensive plan also promotes pedestrian safety and encourages commercial development that enhances the city of Tampa's character and ambiance. The proposed plan development has a five-foot sidewalk along part of West Marlin Street and retains a five-foot sidewalk adjacent to the site on South McDill Avenue, which connects to the entrance of the building. Further, the PD provides a 15-foot setback and a 10-foot wall on the east side to be sensitive to the existing residential uses abutting the subject site. Planning Commission staff finds that the request will not alter the character of the surrounding area and is comparable and compatible with this portion of the Ballast Point neighborhood. The proposed rezoning would allow for development that is comparable and compatible with the character of the surrounding uses and is consistent with the development pattern anticipated under the CNU 35 and R10 designations. And this concludes my presentation. All right, any questions? All right, Mr. Hussein, yes, sir. Hussein Hussein Development Coordination. First, go ahead and show the aerial view of the property.
As you see, the property right here outlined in red. To the north, you have a Walgreens, Zone CG. To the south, you have also a commercial establishment, Zone CG. To the east, you have residential single family, Zone RS75. And to the west, you have commercial use, which is Zone CG and PD. As you see, uh, also uh, to the south, you'll have West Marwin Avenue. To the um, uh, to the east, you have South Zion Street. To the uh, west, you have South McDill Avenue. And then to the north, you have West Gandhi Boulevard. I will now go ahead and show the site plan provided by the applicant. The, uh, the site contains two parcels. To the west parcel is currently vacant, and the east parcel uh, contains residential single-family uh, use. The vacant parcel was previously occupied with a restaurant use. The applicant proposes to develop a 6,600-square-foot uh, restaurant on site. This one-story structure is sited on the north boundary of the site and is located within the area of the west parcel only. Their surface parking is proposed to the south of the building here. Um, historically, this commercial parcel has been developed with the western uh, parcel only. The applicant has obtained the eastern parcel, which is being proposed uh, location for the surface parking also. Uh, there is one point of vehicular, vehicular access to the site, and it's located to the west on South McDill Avenue, as you see uh, coming in and then also coming out from the same access point. Uh, traffic flow is designed with one-way traffic, uh, one-way travel heading east, circulating the internal surface parking spaces with one-way travel heading west, um, exiting the site on South McDill Avenue also. Uh, Five-foot sidewalks are proposed along the west and along the south. Pedestrian connections are provided to the adjacent sidewalks to the west. The surrounding uses on South McDill um, are also our commercial, our restaurant use, our residential single family use, um, and also uh, um, single, uh, multifamily use in the area. The requested use of restaurant is consistent with the historic use of the property and the commercial uses which exist on the McDill Avenue corridor. Uh, the total lot area is 37,000. 704 square feet or 0 0.87 acres. The maximum building height will be at 45 feet in height. Uh, as stated prior, uh, currently on site is a vacant restaurant and residential use. And also on site, the applicant is required to have 52 parking spaces and they are providing 61 parking spaces. <coughs> I will now show you the elevations provided by the applicant. As you see the elevation to the north. The elevation to the south. The elevation to the east. And the elevation to the west. Pictures on site were taken, and I will show you uh, the pictures. This is the picture of the site on McDill, standing on McDill. This is on the south portion of the site, looking at it. And one more picture of the site, looking at the public notice sign. This is the east portion of the site um, on West Marwin Avenue. This is uh, the single family home that is going to be demolished, as you see the public notice sign also in front of it.
This is the view looking east on Marlin. Another look at the residential single family to the east. As you see, commercial use to the south and also residential. As you see here, you have um, to the west, you have commercial use. There's more commercial use to the west. And to the north, you have Walgreens. I will show you the site plan one more time. As you see the proposed restaurant, service parking, and the eastern portion with the service parking. There are uh, three waivers being proposed by the applicant. Uh, that's a request to reduce the required trees from one per 1,500 square feet of VUA to one per 2,100 square feet of VUA. Second one is request to increase the average number of unseparated linear parking spaces from the required 10 to 12. And the third is request to increase the allowable wall height from six feet to 10 feet uh, for the buffer. Development review and compliance staff has reviewed the application, finds the overall request to be inconsistent with the land development code. See natural resources uh, uh, waivers uh, for this inconsistency. Should it be the Pleasure City Council to approve this application, the applicant must provide revisions to the revised revision sheet between first and second reading. I'm here for any questions. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thank applicant. you. Good evening, Truett Gardner, 400 North Ashley Drive. While we're getting this set up, I'll take care of just a few uh, housekeeping items. One, um, there's a revision sheet, which I wanted to say for the record, we are amenable to the changes between first and second reading should this be approved. Also, some of the numbers didn't translate over to the site plan. So for instance, Zane mentioned actually a larger um, surplus of parking than we're providing. There is a slight increase in square footage, which again will be made, made between first and second reading. And the new park account will be 57 with 61 being provided. I think he had a larger surplus than that. And then secondly, before I forget, I have a letter of support um, from the owner of three properties in the vicinity. And one, I wanted to submit that for the record, but also in that she references that she would like for us to install decorative fencing and landscaping along Marlin Avenue, which we are also amenable to. If you'd like, we're happy to make that change between second, first and second reading as well. So with that, I'll submit this to Mr. Schell. All right, if we could move to the presentation. So this is our development team, and we have the full squad basically occupying your chambers tonight. So if you have any questions of an architectural, legal, or uh, civil engineering, or landscape nature, please let us know. And again, this is the site. It is the northeast corner of McDill and Marlin. Um, the property with the number one is the former love site which has been vacant since 2018. And as Zane mentioned, the property labeled number two is the new property that's gonna be made a part of this PD, and that will be for the provision of parking, which was highly requested by the neighborhood. They wanted to make sure that we had adequate parking, and I believe that we do. Also, you'll just note uh, Gandhi Boulevard immediately to the north, which is, Zane showed the Walgreens, that is the the building with the large rectangular roof immediately to the north of, of numbers one and two. 
And then next, this is the old uh, Love's restaurant. The building was demolished about six months ago, but you can see the parking, which we're proposing to uh, retain basically in its current configuration. And then also notably, the footprint of the proposed building will basically fit within the footprint of the, of the former Love's property. This is our site plan. I mentioned the square footage. This number is slightly different than what's on your current site plan. The proposal is for 6,600 square feet. There were just some changes being made in iterations uh, with the architect and the civil engineer and the development team. One story, 45 feet in height. And again, as you notice from the former slide, the Love's building, which was formerly there, is the same general location as this proposed building. Then we've got findings of support from everyone uh, except for natural resources, which goes to our waiver, which are technical in nature, and Addie is going to, Addie Clark is going to address those, but findings of consistency from all other reviewing agencies. And this is the rendered site plan, which shows the desire to really improve the streetscape along McDill, along West Marlin, provide lush landscaping around the entire perimeter, enhance landscaping on the east side of the property, and really make sure that this has a good, uh, very lush feel to it. So with that, I will turn it over to uh, Ms. Clark to run through the waivers real quick, and we'll take it from there. Good evening, for the record, Addie Clark, 400 North Ashley Drive. So as Stuart mentioned, uh, we do have a few waivers here. So this one um, really is to request that we retain multiple existing trees that are already located in the vehicular use area along Marlin Avenue. Again, uh, we are adaptively reusing the site as much as possible while also beautifying the area um, outside of the property line as well. And it's important to note again that we are meeting our green space requirements and are also improving that pedestrian infrastructure and connectivity along both McDill and Marlin Avenue. And here, um, it's really important to look at the site as a whole, so in terms of functionality, access, operations, and of course, the overall vision. This request stems from the fact that we are restricting access to just McDill, which is that mixed-use collector corridor roadway, and we are not putting access on the local neighborhood street of Marlin Ave. So having access only on McDill drives site circulation to be one way uh, throughout the whole site. So we would have preferred to have um, raised landscape islands, of course, within the parking area, uh, but in order to keep proper circulation and wide enough radii, radii for larger vehicles to maneuver around the site, uh, we had to keep the existing striped islands. Again, this was really for a safety and maneuverability reason, um, resulting from keeping that one access on the collector roadway. And here, lastly, during our neighborhood outreach, which we'll be discussed about in a moment, we were asked by the adjacent neighbor to provide additional screening on the east. So we're happy to provide that um, as a request to increase a wall height, which usually we, we don't have that before you. Um, so again, that increase is from six feet for up to 10 feet. So now if there are any questions, um, I'd like to introduce Blake Casper and Wil Wilt Morley. <laughs> yeah. There we there go. You go. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And uh, hi, Blake Casper, Aiden Ladoga. I think everybody knows me. Um, great to be back. And um, and this is a really a, a great project to, to bring to you all. Um, it's my honor, really, to introduce Wilt Morley, who is the the, the real uh, vision and the man behind Mad Dogs. And, and Mad Dogs is a little pub in South Tampa, uh, if you're not familiar with it, but it, it really is a neighborhood institution for, for South Tampa. Uh, and it's really, you know, we're, we're lucky to have Will, who adopted Tampa, moved here 32 years ago, um, and, and really poured his heart and soul into this, into this pub. And, and so we're excited to have the opportunity to, to, to find a new home for it. So hopefully you all will consider uh, our project. And with that, I'll introduce Wilt Morley. Wilt. Thank you very much. <coughs> oh, thank you very much. And I'll be very brief, which is uh, something I'm not famous for doing. But um, I started Mad Dogs and Englishman 32 years ago. 
And it's a little, it was supposed to be really, it was never supposed to be a pub because I looked at this sort of Florida building and I thought I'd like to do some sort of an English thing here. And I really started off and it was modelled on sort of someone who might go to Spain and start a, an English bar and people within a very short time said, oh, it's a pub. So 32 years ago, been going for 32 years, People have met there, people have married there, people have got divorced there. <laughs> and, you know, I, I've never really made any money out of it, but I've muddled on. It's been given me a wonderful way of life. I'm very grateful to Tampa, indeed, and all the people that supported me. I started off not really knowing anything about the restaurant business. I, don't, I still really don't know anything about the restaurant business. But about two years ago... I had dinner with my friend Blake. The reason I know Blake Casper is because when he was about 17, his mother was one of my first patrons, pretty much my only patron. She lived on Warcraft. And she said, I've got this lad, and I don't know what we're going to do with him. He is going to go into the McDonald's business. Can, know, he, can, he, can he come and work as a busboy here? And, and that's, how I've know, that's why I know Blake. And then a couple of years ago, we were having dinner. I said, look, I'm 72. I don't know if I long I could go on with this. And he said, oh, that's such a shame. And everybody loves Mad Dogs. And I said, well, this building itself is kind of falling down. And I don't, you know, it's diff very difficult business, as you all know, the restaurant business. And he said, why don't we do something with it? Why don't we make do a new Mad Dogs, try and do more, make it what you would have done if you'd had any money when you started, which is to make it a real English pub. We tried to buy the building next to us. That didn't work. And so then he found this property up the road. And he said, let's, you know, let's, 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 let's build it from the ground up. And let's, and let's do a really lovely, lovely building. And any, I mean, you that know the Oxford Exchange know that he really does do lovely buildings. And so here we are. We're going to do a really nice civilised English pub. Um, I hope you'll approve it. I'll be able to semi-retire, but I think he wants me to go in there and, as he says, kiss the baby still. And uh, thank you for hearing me, and, and thank you very much for everything you do, and I mean that genuinely, because I've been before you a couple of times when I've forgotten to mail that thing in at the end of January with the, how much liquor you sold, and, how, and I've had to come and say, oh, I'm sorry, and you've always been very kind and very graceful. So whatever you decide... Thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Is the name Mad Dogs an Englishman named after the Joe Cocker album? No. As a matter of fact, <laughs> is it's it the, not. Because is it the Noel Coward song? No, no. It's Kipling, Rudyard Kipling, who said, only Mad Dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. And he was referring to all the English people, English, you know, uh, black sheep of the family were sent out to do these plantations in India and... And, you know, they were the only ones who went out in the, in, in the midday sun. Nobody else did. So only Mad Dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun is really Kipling. And then Joe Cocker stole it, Noel Card stole it, and then I stole it. And I think a few other places have stolen it. Now Blake's stolen it. So anyway, you, you sort of lost me when you said you were going to make it dignified now. I kind of like Well, I know that. that. And, er and every, everybody who comes in says to me, oh, you're not going to change anything. And I say, no, it's going to be nicer. It's still going to be casual, but it's not going to have termites, and it's going to have better plumbing, and, um, you know, we're going we're gonna to do it really right, and it's going to be a lovely new place. So, no, it's not going to lose the casualness, and we wouldn't make any money if it did. And by but the way, it, it is, it is going to be a real English pub. I didn't know Blake had a sense of humour like he had back there, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't know what? I didn't know Blake had a sense of humour. He does have a sense of humor. <laughs> Anybody else? Any questions? Any, uh, anything else? No. Nope. All right. Thank Anybody you. in the public wish to speak on this item? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. I support this because nobody evacuates from a pub. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, that was Stephanie Pointer, by the way. She didn't say her name. Um, Carol Ann Bennett, um, I love Mad Dogs. 
Nobody's going to evacuate from a pub, all like that. I, I'm not happy about the tree waiver, though. I would like to see they've got four extra parking spaces. I'd get rid of the four extra parking spaces, put a tree. Just saying, not thrilled about the tree waiver. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am? Oh, oh, yeah, uh, do sorry. we have a rebuttal from the applicant? No, but happy to answer any questions should you have any. Any questions? Motion closed? Oh, I Yes. The, the, the uh, comments that you, the positive comments you delivered to us, uh, those, the, is that all the, the joining on the other side of that 10 foot wall? Uh, so then there's nobody here for the, 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 the residents? If you would say that one more time? With the residents that you had the comments from that were in, uh, supporting this, they were on the other side of that 10 foot wall? Actually, uh, the person on the east side of the 10 foot wall is someone other than the letter that I submitted. Okay. Um, we don't have anybody negative here to speak. For no, okay. nope. Thank you. And that was an accommodation that that owner wanted to have that privacy. Motion closed. So moved. Second. Motion, Councilman Moran, second. Councilman Vieira, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Councilwoman Hertak, would you mind reading item Thank number you. eight? Um, I'm just going to start by saying I have a postcard framed in my house that says Florida, we don't evacuate a party. Or we don't evacuate. Yes. Yeah, so anyway, just kind of goes with that. Uh, and so I would anticipate that people would be driving to it, not away from it during a hurricane. Um, file number REZ. We don't encourage that. No, we don't. <laughs> but but you know it's reality. Let's let's just be honest. The first things that go are beer, bread, that. and uh, yeah, milk. Anyway. Um, follow, follow your public officials' yes, evacuation. Of yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Um, <laughs> REZ 23-75, ordinance being presented for first reading consideration, an ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 4914 South McDill Avenue and 3013 West Marlin Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification CG commercial general and RS 75 residential single family to PD plan development restaurant providing an effective date Second. and including the revision sheet. Um, I also adopt the findings and reasonings of the Planning Commission staff report, and I find that this is, um, uh, uh, this complies with Land Development Code Section 27-136. Uh, the subject site has historically been utilized with a restaurant use, and the proposed restaurant will remain within the CMU 35 portion of the site. We have a motion from Councilwoman Hertak, second from Councilwoman Vieira. Roll call vote. Clendenin? Yes. Henderson? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Hertak? Yes. Meniscaco? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on November 2nd, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. located at Old City Hall 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, third floor, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Thank you very much. Mr. Hussein. Hussein Hussein, Development Coordination, case number nine. REZ 23-81, this proposed rezoning at the location 2310 West Norfolk Street. Proposed rezoning from CG Commercial General and RS50 Residential Single Family to RM24 Residential Multifamily. And I'll pass along to our planning commission. Yes, ma'am. Emily Phelan, planning commission staff. Uh, the subject site is located within the university planning district in the Armenia Gardens neighborhood, and the site is not located within an evacuation zone. Here's an aerial of the subject site, which is located here, and it has a mix of uh, residential and commercial uses. The commercial uses are along North uh, Armenia Avenue, which is a transit emphasis corridor, and the single family residential uses are to the east, south, and north of the subject site. This is the future land use map. The subject site is here and is designated under the community mixed use 35 designation, which you can see along North Armenia Avenue and the transition to residential 10 and residential 20. The proposed RM24 zoning district can be considered under the underlying future land use designation per the consistency matrix in the land development code. 
Planning Commission staff finds that the request will provide infill development on the site that is presently underutilized, which is encouraged by the comprehensive plan. The site is approximately 82 feet from North Armenia Avenue, a designated transit emphasis corridor, which is suitable for redevelopment and intensification. The request will provide additional housing in proximity to employment opportunities and many amenities. The proposed RM24 zoning district would provide a transition in density from the commercial general to the west and the single family to the east. Single family attached uses are limited to the periphery of established neighborhoods. The request supports many policies in the comprehensive plan as it relates to housing the city's population. The request provides additional housing in the Armenia Gardens neighborhood. The comprehensive plan encourages new housing on vacant and underutilized land to ensure an adequate housing supply is available to meet the needs of Tampa's present and future populations. The proposed PD is comparable and compatible with the character of the surrounding area and is consistent with the long-range development pattern encouraged under the Community Mixed Use 35 Future Land Use designation. And this concludes my presentation. Any questions? Mr. Tsang? I'll first go ahead and share the aerial view of the property. As you see, the property is outlined here in red. To the north is zone RS50. You have residential single family detached to the north. To the south is zone uh, CG and PD. This is a bank, uh, bank and office and professional uh, business professional. To the east, uh, zone RS50 of residential single family detached and to the west you also have another bank uh, across um, or right next to it and also across the street. The uh, applicant is proposing for the development of the property for residential multifamily uses. The subject site is approximately 0 0.31 acres and contains a residential single family detached structure at this time. The subject site is located at the uh, east of North Armenia Avenue, southeast of the intersection of North Corsi Drive and West Norfolk Street. Uh, the maximum building height is 60 feet in height. And I will show you the elevate or sorry, I'll show you the pictures taken on site. picture of the site as is. To the north of the site, you have residential single family. To the east of the site, you have residential single family. To the west of the site, you have commercial uses, including a, a bank and also a supermarket. And a little bit closer to the west of the site is the bank and also the supermarket. I will show you the aerial view one more time. The development review and compliance staff has reviewed this application and finds the overall request to be consistent with the land development code. This being Euclidean, no site plan was needed. I'm here for any questions. Any questions? Is there an applicant? Applicant? Hello, state your name first, please. Hello, my name is Junius Hernandez. So about this land, like this house about five months ago, I'm planning on the house, or the property has a house more to the left of the side. Um, my proposal of this is to uh, do a rezoning and do a lot split. I would like to stay living on the current house and do like a multifamily on the right side of the house.
So this is uh, like the house right now, and the, the red part is that I want to do a demolition of all these parts so Hold I can. Um, th this is a Euclidean rezoning, so we don't need to see a site plan. Oh, We're okay. simply looking, uh, and we can't, we can't look at the site plan to consider. So we're just here to talk about the rezoning. Just, just, just the rezoning. Request. Just the rezoning. Um, we can't. We, we shouldn't be looking at any plans oh, okay. you have. If, I mean, if you don't have anything else to add from what is in the presentation, I could ask the council and council persons for uh, if they would like to ask you questions. If you'd like me to do that. Okay. okay. Do y'all have any questions for the applicant? No. Okay. Um, anything else? If not, we'll, we'll, close, we'll close. Okay. Okay. It's a motion to close. Well, anyone in the audience? Oh, Paul, I'm sorry. Is there anybody from the public here to talk about this? I assume because I didn't see anybody engaged in this. Okay. Nobody from the public here? Nobody from the public? Was there a motion to close? Motion to close. Mm -hmm. a second. We have a motion from Councilman Miranda, a second from Councilwoman Hertek. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay. Councilman Carlson. Um, Move file number REZ 23-81, ordinance being presented for first reading consideration, ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 2310 West Norfolk Street in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification CG, uh, commercial general and RS 50 residential single family to RM 24 residential multifamily providing effective date. We have a motion from Councilman Carlson, a second from Councilwoman Hertek. Roll call vote. Henderson? Yes. Vieira? Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Hertak? Yes. Clendenin? Yes. Meniscalco? Motion carried with Vieira. Meniscalco absent. Second reading. An adoption will be held on November 2nd, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. at Old City Hall, located at 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, third floor, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Does he know when to come back? I think Mr. Hussain is telling him now. Can I tell him? Yeah. It's the 2nd of November, here at 9.30 a.m. Okay, fine. Mr. Hussain. Yes, sir. Zane Hussain, Development Coordination, Agenda Item Number 10, Case REZ 23-85. This is a proposed rezoning at the location 4402 West Crest Avenue. Proposed rezoning from IG Industrial General to PD Plan Development for all IG uses. Sorry. I'll now pass it along to our Planning Commission. Emily Phelan, Planning Commission staff. The subject site's located within the West Shore uh, Planning District and the site's located um, within Evacuation Zone E. Uh, this is an aerial map of the subject site, which is outlined here in purple, and the subject site is surrounded by uh, light industrial uses. This is the future land use map. The subject site's here, and again, it is surrounded by the light industrial future land use designation. Industrial general uses can be considered under the light industrial future land use designation. The plan development proposes a 0 0.43 FAR, which is well below the intensity that can be considered under the LI designation. The request is consistent with policies that discourage industrial uses in close proximity to residential uses. The subject site is not surrounded by a residential plan designation or residentially zoned properties. Given the presence of LI and other commercial uses in the area, Planning Commission staff finds the PD is comparable and compatible. The PD proposes seven existing structures. Although the applicant is requesting that the placement of sidewalks along West Crest Avenue and North Coolidge Avenue be deemed impractical, the plan development proposes internal pedestrian connections throughout the site, which is consistent with the comprehensive plan. The request also supports many of the plan's industrial policies. The plan supports opportuni opportunities for industrial development to accommodate employment generators for the city's growing population. The request will continue to maintain industrial areas that provide for the manufacturing of goods, flex space, and research and development. And with that, the Planning Commission found the plan development comparable and compatible with the surrounding uses and is consistent. That concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Any questions? Mr. Hussain? 
Ms. Ames Hussain, Development Coordination. I'll first go ahead and show the aerial view of the property. As you see the property outlined in red, now surrounding the property is IG zoning. To the north, um, to the north, as you see, you have West Crest Avenue. Uh, above it is industrial and vacant commercial. To the south, south here, uh, you're going to have uh, commercial and industrial uses. Also, you have West South Avenue. Uh, to the east, you have industrial uses, commercial uses, and residential single family. And to the west, you have commercial and industrial uses, as I'll show you in pictures to come. The subject site is located at the general vicinity of south of West Hillsborough Avenue, west of North Lois Avenue, on the southwest corner of West Crest Avenue, and North Coolidge um, Avenue, right here. The site is currently developed with seven structures for a total of 22 units. Which, um, which contains commercial and industrial uses in each unit. While the subject site has IG zoning and commercial and industrial uses uh, have existed on the site for many years, the applicant requests the PD site plan approval to vest the existing setbacks along with the requested natural resources and transportation waivers as listed on page one of the staff report. The subject site uh, sorry, the site plan submitted identifies 22 units with 13 encroaching into the east property line by 1.4 inches or 1 foot and 4 inches. Uh, the applicant has applied for the relief uh, from this encroachment with a submittal of file ENC-23-0000010. Vehicle access to the site, as I'll show you the site plan. Vehicle access to the site um, is proposed with one point of access located on the North West Crest Avenue and two points of access, let's see the North access right here, and two points uh, of access located on the east side um, of North Coolidge Avenue. All access points provided two-way ingress and egress to the site. Surfing, uh, surface, uh, surface parking is provided throughout the site. The site is 58,886 square feet. Uh, the lot, that's the commercial development. The lot area is 139,735 square feet or 3.21 acres. The proposed height is at 60 feet in height. Um, as on site is the commercial office and warehouse use at this time. Uh, there is a requirement of 92 parking spaces and the applicant has 74 parking spaces, uh, and they have a waiver uh, in doing so, which I will talk about later. Showing the elevation or pictures of the site provided by the applicant. First, we'll talk about view from the north on West Crest Avenue, the driveway coming into the site. The view from the east on uh, North Coolidge Avenue to the driveway. View from the east, North Coolidge Avenue, the driveway. And the southern property corner of the site. I will now show you pictures taken uh, by staff. This is the entrance of the site on West Crest Avenue. This is a picture of one of the buildings on the site. This is a picture of the northeast corner of the site. This is a picture of the east entry to the site. Uh, on Crest Avenue in this picture, looking north of the site. The 
IG uses all around. Uh, this is looking east of the site. It's looking south on North Coolidge Avenue in this picture. And a little bit farther down the site is a, um, on the east side is a residential single family home. I will show the site plan one more time. There are four waivers being requested. So on the staff report, there it says five, but one's being taken off, number five is being taken off. So there are four being requested. Request to reduce the parking spaces from 92 spaces to 74 spaces is the first waiver being requested, 20% reduction. Uh, second one is request to reduce the required number of loading berths from four to zero. Uh, third is request to reduce the required eight foot VOA landscape buffer to five feet along Coolidge Avenue. Uh, number four is request to reduce the required 13 foot wide curb to curb parking islands to five feet. And that fifth waiver will be removed as this is a requested change from natural resources. Um, uh, I will state that the site is as, uh, as is, everything's existing. There will be no changes physically done to the site. So just keep that in mind uh, to let you know. And this uh, had to do with uh, vesting in uh, those uses, the setbacks, and also for these waivers I just stated. The Development Review and Compliance staff has reviewed this petition and finds the request to be inconsistent with the Land Development Code. This is due to the transportation findings um, and also with the parking spaces. Should it be the pleasure of City Council to approve this application, the applicant must provide revisions to the revision sheet between first and second reading. I'm here for any questions. Any questions for Mr. Hussein? Thank you very much, sir. Applicant, Thank you. please state your name. Go ahead. Ryan Manassi, thank you, City Council, uh, 401 East Jackson Street, 331 Home. I'll be using the overhead. I'm trying to fancy tonight. <clears throat> Look at that. I did it. Good evening again, Ryan Manassi, for the record. Um, thank you for having me here tonight, and um, I'll go through our request. So uh, Zane did show you um, some slides. I'll try not to be redundant, but I'm going to go through the, the application thoroughly on my end. Um, the outlined area is the subject site, and this again is to request the PD rezoning for all IG uses. The property is currently IG. We're not asking to get rid of any IG uses. We just have to do this mainly because of some site configurations, the uses on the site, and um, which kind of triggered a few of these waivers, and I'll get more into that in a second. Zane did show you the elevations provided, and again, they're not the customary elevations that you're used to, and that's because there's no new proposed structures on the site. There's seven existing buildings, and those seven buildings are remaining. So this zooms in on the site, <clears throat> and just to kind of go over the orientation again, um, to your north, you have West Crest Avenue, and then to, I'm sorry, to the west, you have, you have West Crest Avenue to the north, and North Coolidge Avenue to your east. Um, Crest Avenue does have that one access point, while Coolidge will have the two access points, as Zane indicated. The site overall is about 3.21 acres, and again, it is currently zoned IG. Those seven structures uh, include 22 units that are um, placed throughout there, and we have identified those by numerical order on the site plan. And as Zane mentioned, we are providing 74 parking spaces. Um, and our tabulation chart, which I'll go over here in a second, uh, required us to have 92 parking spaces. I would like to point out the site plan is uh, providing bicycle parking in the, the southwest corner, and that's to accommodate 16 spaces. So just some basic, basic math that I can actually do in my head, that, that brings me to 90 spaces if we used all 16 of those. Don't ask for anything further than that because I can't do it. <laughs> um, so again, the main update to the site would be the parking configuration. Um, just to be clear, the buildings are staying, they're existing. Um, uh, there's going to be some reorientation, restriping of that parking to try to accommodate more parking spaces. 
and that helped us drive our um, waiver down as much as possible when we're redesigning the existing environment. I turned my slides, but not the ones on screen. So this is the tabulation chart that's shown in your site plan. Um, what we did was an analysis of the existing uses. And um, out of these 22 units, they're listed there and on, and on the site plan. And there's a mixture of uses between um, you have the customary warehouse use, you have car detailers, you have limited recreational type uses like those sport coachings and things of that nature. Again, all uses that are permitted in the IG zoning district, so we're not trying to get outside of that. Um, just to mention some history on it, due to the previous ownership, the uses that were established on the property created a parking issue among some of these other waivers that we're requesting. Additionally, once considered a change of use, it triggers full site compliance, which again causes some of these waivers to come into play. And obviously there's limited resources for us to work with with an existing site. Um, this rezoning will keep these small businesses um, going while we go through this process. We're currently working through, um, we've worked with the building department for some chapter five issues and the code magistrate and the rezoning. Um, after communication with uh, the building department, zoning department, it was found that this rezoning was the only, really the, the main or the best way and the most efficient way to um, relinquish some of these issues and then proceed forward with the site in its configuration without just starting to evict tenants and you know starting from square one. So the, uh, the aerial on screen, and I know you've seen a few aerials, but again, our subject site is outlined in red, and it's just showing you that neighborhood. Um, Zane did a good job of explaining it, but just so you know, to your, to your left of the screen, you're going to have TIA, um, and, or the Aviation Authority, whoever owns that, that's passed there to the west. And then towards uh, the north, you have Hillsborough Avenue, and you have some of those CI uses, uh, commercial intensive uses, strip center, and then there's some IG uses as well directly to the north. Um, some open storage and other kind of storage um, um, establishments. And I grabbed this picture because I kind of liked the, the view of it from the Google 3D view. Um, it kind of shows you the scale and massing, and obviously it, it, is, it is a built environment, so I'm not proposing any kind of new structures, but you can see how it actually fits in quite well. I mean, obviously this is an IG zoning district. These type of uses are expected in this district. They're, they're encouraged. Um, the LI land use category uh, supports this as well. Um, one thing I like to mention, and, and it'll show on some of the pictures Zane had and some of mine, is that the site has been developed. Um, it, really, the, the farthest warehouse to your, where the star is to the top left of the property, that was almost like an existing warehouse, I mean, prior to 2007, and the remainder of it was an open field. Um, somewhere around 2018, 20, 2017, the new warehouses were developed. And that's why you see it more of an updated look at a warehouse complex. I mean, the drive aisles are to code. They have actual stormwater retention. And in some of these further pictures you're going to see, you're going you're gonna to see some of that mature landscaping that surrounds the property. Just to briefly go over the zoning districts, um, IG, we're outlined in yellow. You have some of the CI to the north and then um, CI to your east, your future land use category. I'm trying not to bore you with some of the details you've heard three times, but again, our site is outlined in yellow. You have that PQP land use, which is the airport to the left, and then to the right, you have the Hillsborough County facilities as well as a military installation uh, lay down yard in that blue coloration. Um, just to indicate the waivers that are requested, of the four remaining waivers, as Zane stated, um, we were found inconsistent by transportation mainly for waiver number one, which is the parking reduction waiver. The uh, waiver number two, three, and four were supported by staff. Um, and again, two, three, and four, really three and four are um, uh, an example of waivers that were produced when we try to reconfigure the parking to get as uh, many parking spaces we needed to help with the tabulation of the existing uses. This is an exhibit I made. Um, so the highlighted blue areas with that red number are estimated parking spaces, and that's that's using an eight by 16 parking space. Um, you know, it'd almost be disingenuous to come in here with a site plan with these warehouse buildings and these bay doors and just place a bunch of striped parking spaces in front of each one of them. So these highlighted blue areas are those areas that do not show right now on this proposed site plan indicated parking spaces. But the, number, uh, the numbers that I put into these highlighted areas really equate to almost 28 spaces. And it, even in some of Zane's photos, and you're going to see in mine, these individual businesses park in front of their bay doors. Sometimes they pull into the bays. There's um, a use out there that 
they strictly do photography for cars for online sales. So there's there's a mixture of uses, and what I'm getting at is there's other areas that we can park where this complex will function and has been functioning. Um, you know, this development, it does support opportunities and accommodate small businesses. Um, that's typically what you see in these um, warehouse complexes, and especially with the mixture of uses that you could have in the IG zoning district. And Hart Route is close, in close proximity to our um, project. It's just on um, Hillsborough Avenue, about a quarter mile away. But again, I, I looked on some of the street views, and when I did my site visit, you can actually cut through some of the um, strip center if you were on Hillsborough Avenue. So it's more of one of those friendly work environments, I would say. So you could take public transportation and jump on your bike and get to work. And we have 16 parking spaces for that, for bicycles. Um, these are just some goals, objectives, and policies from the comprehensive plan that we agree with the Planning Commission staff that we are in compliance with. I won't go through each one of those, I promise. But they'll, I'll submit this PowerPoint presentation to the record. And just going over some photos, so the first one on the left, I'll do left to right, is facing north, and that's on Coolidge. And you can see, again, that landscaping that I was alluding to earlier that's established in there, and you can really see that it's actually a nice off, um, warehouse uh, complex. But going north, um, you get to the, it, on the other side of that vegetation would be Hillsborough Avenue. Now the picture on the right is looking south, and you can see some of those other warehouse type uses. Um, also, the building right there to your right-hand side, um, that's where that one-foot encroachment is, and we are in the process with the right-of-way department to do that. I believe the process is in the hands of legal, not, not Kate legal, but the right-of-way legal. And um, um, I was talking to staff earlier this week, and it seemed like there wasn't going to be an issue with that approval. But again, on this side of the project, we're requesting the zero setback, so for the rezoning purposes, it wouldn't be an issue with the encroachment. This is looking across, I'm standing on the north side when I took the picture. Got you, Zane. And um, <laughs> looking at the subject site, and again, you can see there's those, um, those, those stormwater swells, those ditches that are in front of the site, and as well going along um, Coolidge. And that kind of goes back to what um, the Planning Commission was talking about as far as the sidewalks. If we could put the sidewalks in, I've talked to my client, and we would, we would do it. But unfortunately, in some scenarios, I don't think we're going to be able to. And that's where that note came from. Um, but we did provide internal circulation on the site plan, and that's where you see that striping along the internal um, um, site. And then the right-hand side, that's kind of facing southeast. Um, it's the main corner of our property. Just some of the internals um, kind of demonstrates what I was explaining as far as some of these open spaces that could be used in front of these bay doors. Again, this is a, a mixture of uses, a mixture of businesses. It's not a single use. It's not a single business. I mean, it's, it's, it's a con and, and the way we have the tabulation set up on the site plan, we can interchange these uses not to exceed what is being requested here tonight. But you could see from the screen in these photos, and I believe Zane's photo shows some of the internal circulation, you're going to see some of these vehicles park in front of the bay doors. Some of them park in front of their doors. Um, some of them pull into their units. So again, we think that the parking reduction is justified by means of the bicycle parking to include the spaces that we didn't just delineate as parking spaces and, and show you on a site plan. But there is more open air area. Out of all the staff review agencies, as Zane stated, uh, in, uh, transportation is inconsistent for the parking reduction waiver, but of the remaining agencies, they all found this project consistent. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions and would respect your uh, approval on this. Any questions? Yeah. Yes, sir. So. <laughs> How did we get here? When you, so this was, this was the previous owner that constructed this? Is that? that is correct. My client is the new owner, and once um, they were under, they inherited some code violations for Chapter 5, which are building violations. And I would imagine the, what happened was it started getting, it got built out back in 2016 or 2018, and you start moving in tenants, and then tenants change, and then they go in for permits, and there's not really a tabulation on, you know, who's there and where it's going. And then we get to the point to where my client purchased the property and they were under, already under code violation for the uses as far as, you know, the, I, I believe they were doing AC, um, they are trying to put some AC units in some of the units and then it was discovered. So really, again, this PD kind of vests those uses that are currently existing, those businesses on site, and takes care of the parking issue. Because some of the uses, if you just look at the parking requirements and nothing against Jonathan's and his review, he has to go off the parking code. I mean, a, a car a vehicle sales and leasing, for example, on the site plan, I think it requires seven, seven spaces for one of the units, but they all do online sales. 
all the, all the vehicles are inside of the warehouse itself. Um, part of that, another unit just does the photos for those. So again, it's, you know, we have what we have on paper and then we have what the operation is doing. But I guess to answer your question, we're working through the process um, with the building department and then zoning. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I mean, you can see there's, a, there's lots of problematic areas. The, the, um, the stormwater swale that's on Crest, was that developed by the previous owner? Correct. Yeah, the site was existing as it was it was bought like this. So, so, so that was that, but that was that's on y'all's fully contained within your property. That wasn't a, a the city swell. Or... I believe is the you, on the outside. The may be outside of the property boundary. I'd have to look at exactly yeah. at the survey. But um, are you are you referring to? The, it, it might be in the right of way actually. The stormwater pond up there. Correct. Oh the, no, no, the stormwater pond is on the property. There's the actually two ponds. Um, so if you look there on uh, north of unit two, three, and four, and as well as unit eight, um, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. There's, mm -hmm. So, so the, the reason that you're saying sidewalks were impractical because of that, and then also now you've got your encroachments that you're going for the one zero foot on um, the north-south road, which was Coolidge? Coolidge. So Correct. Coolidge. Um, is that the reason why sidewalks are impractical because of the existing encroachments? Correct. And and that um, and I think in the picture ways where they have those swells, you know. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else? All right. Do you have anybody in the public that wishes to speak on this item? This is item number ten. And we do not have anybody online. Do you have any rebuttal or anything else to add, sir? I do not. I just re request your approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have a motion close from Council Member Miranda with a second from Council Member uh, Henderson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Council Member Miranda, I believe. I'm, I'm going to comment on this first. Oh, you want to say yeah, something? Yeah, I want to say something. Go yeah, ahead, sir. yeah. This is this is one of the situations. You know, if they had come to us, I don't think we would have approved it. Um, with you know the, the situation, so I mean, it's really a tough situation because, you know, I I don't know. It's it, what a mess. Um, I hate doing the PD because you know that that actually you know grants things that we would have never individually granted as, as, as a council, I think, on a lot of these things. I'm, I'm, I'm empathetic with the, the owner and in the, in the circumstances that you've got, and I'll probably vote in favor of it, but it, I'm just doing it begrudgingly. Just so you know, you know I don't, I don't, it's, not, it's not a pleasant situation for anybody, so thank you. Council Member Miranda, would you like to read it? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. File number 10, REZ 23-85. An order is being rezoning property in the general vicinity of 4402 West Crest Avenue, City of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in Section 1 from Sony District's Classification IG Industrial General to PD Plan Development Industrial General Use, providing an effective date. And also that uh, the, the, the applicant has met the burden of proof regarding REZ 2385, uh, competent substantial evidence, and the development and conditions as shown in the site plan is consistent with the comprehensive plan city code and I find that the request of words do not add vastly per public health safety and general welfare. This motion includes the making of revision shown in the revision sheets. Second. We have a motion from Councilman Moran, second from Councilman Vieira. Let's do a roll call vote. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Um, I, I agree with Councilmember Clinton, but I'm voting yes. Thank you. Vertek? Yes. Clinton? Yes. Henderson? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on November 2nd, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. at Old City Hall, 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, third floor, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Mr. Hussein, tell us about the last item of the night. Let's, let's do it. Actually, it's, you know, 7.35. It's not... As bad as I thought it was, as long as I thought it would be. No. Let's go. Let's go. Right, Agenda let's go. item number 11, case REZ 20. <laughs> no, you've been doing that all night. <laughs> case REZ 23-87. This is a proposed rezoning at the location 2709 North Tampa Street. Proposed rezoning from RM16 residential multifamily to PD planned development residential single family attached and semi-detached. I'll now pass along to our planning commission. Emily Phelan, Planning Commission staff. The site is located within the Central Tampa Planning District. 
the Tampa Heights Urban Village and the Tampa Heights neighborhood. It's located within evacuation zone E. <coughs> this is an aerial of the subject site. Um, you can see the residential that is around the area, including two family and single family detached. And the commercial uses are further to the east along North Florida Avenue. This is the future land use map. The subject sites here is represented by the residential 20 future land use designation. Along North Florida Avenue is where the commercial community commercial 35 designation is where those commercial uses are. And as further to the north and east is residential 20. Planning Commission staff reviewed the application and found no adverse impacts on the surrounding neighborhood. The proposed density of 20 units per acre is consistent with the residential 20 future land use designation. The applicant has entered into a bonus provision agreement with the city since the site exceeds the by right density of 18 dwelling units per acre. Planning Commission staff finds the request um, supported by the plan's infill policies and encourages development on vacant and underutilized land. The request also supports policy direction that promotes density and proximity to transit, commercial services, and employment opportunities. The comprehensive plan speaks to the design of attached single-family units and encourages single-family attached developments to be designed to include orientation of the front door to a neighborhood sidewalk and street. The entrances to five units are oriented towards East Gladys Street and two units are oriented towards North Tampa Street. This design is consistent with land use policy 9.2.6. The request supports many policies in the comprehensive plan as it relates to housing the city's population. The request provides additional housing in the Tampa Heights neighborhood. The comprehensive plan encourages new housing on vacant and underutilized land to ensure an adequate housing supply is available to meet the needs of Tampa's present and future populations. The proposed rezoning would be comparable and compatible with the surrounding development pattern and is consistent with the density anticipated under the residential 20 future land use designation. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Mr. Hussain. Hussain Hussain, Development Coordination. I'll first go ahead and show the aerial view of the property as you see the property is right here outlined in red uh, to the north you have zone cn uh, and pd is a place of religious assembly uh, you also have east warren avenue to the north to the west you have rm16 zoning you have north tampa street right there and you have residential single family detached on the west side to the south uh, you have west gladys street coming through uh, West Gladys Street to the south, uh, the zone RM16 also is residential single family detached and to the east. RM16, uh, this is residential multifamily and residential single family attached. I will now show you the site plan provided by the applicant. The subject site is located north of East Euclid Avenue at the southeast corner of East Gladys Street and North Tampa Street. The applicant is requesting to rezone the property to PD to allow for the development of seven units on site. The site plan identifies five units fronting the north of East Gladys Street. To the north. Uh, these are residential single family attached. And then um, two units fronting west, North Tampa Street, here. And these are residential single family semi-detached. Um, the all units contain two car enclosed garages with one vehicle access to the site on the south from the adjacent alley. The front orientation of each structure provide, pr proposes activation of the street with uh, with Porsches incorporated in the design and pedestrian walkways providing uh, connection to the sidewalks along the north here and the west here. I will now show you the, um, I'm sorry, um, the lot area is 15,516 square feet. Total max height is at 35 feet in height, bless you. Um, the existing use on the, on the site is vacant at this time. The applicant is proposing 16 parking spaces, and the city requirement is also 16 parking spaces. 
I'll now show you the elevations provided by the applicant. For the two units, you have the east elevation, the north elevation, the east elevation, and the west elevation. For the five units, residential single family attached, you'll have uh, the north elevation, the south elevation, And also you'll have uh, the uh, east and west elevation will be provided uh, between first and second reading. I will show you the pictures taken on site by staff. First I'll show you the current picture of the vacant site. Here is a picture on the site looking on at East on Gladys. Residential east of the site. This is to the south at alley access to the site. To the north of the site, you have a place of religious assembly. on Gladys residential to the northeast of the site on Gladys you have residential single family attached you have uh, residential uh, uh, semi-detached on Tampa Street To the east, you have residential multifamily. Here on site, on uh, looking west on Gladys, you have residential single family. And one more picture of residential single family on Tampa Street. I'll go ahead and show you the site plan provided by the applicant one more time. As you see, access to the site coming off that alley to the south. It's a one way in. This is not an exit, by the way, that's, that's uh, trees and bushes. So they would come back out on the alley to the south for seven units. There is one waiver being requested. That's request to reduce the required backup width from six feet to four feet. Development review and compliance staff has reviewed the application and finds the request to be inconsistent with the land development code. Please see the transportation findings related to the waivers uh, for this inconsistency. Should it be the pleasure of city council to approve the application, the applicant must provide revisions to the revision sheet between first and second reading. Here for any questions, yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, uh, so on the corner of Gladys and Tampa, it looks like that unit number one has a wraparound porch with two entrances, both from Tampa and Gladys, is that correct? Um, Maybe that's a question for the applicant. Yeah. Yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah. I'll ask the applicant. If you can just leave that right there, oh, yeah. and yes, if the applicant can answer that right first, I'd appreciate it. Of course. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, well, Mr. Manassi, if you could Good address evening. that question first and kick it off. Good evening, Council. Ryan Manassi, 401 East Jackson Street, uh, Suite 3100 with Johnson Pope Law Firm. Um, to answer the question first, there is a single door. It's facing Gladys Street. Now the wraparound porch through extensive proactive, proactivity with the Tampa Heights Civic Association, we designed it to have that nice wraparound look. And as you see in the elevations, oh, that's not the I could show you on my presentation. Yeah, no, yeah. it just looks like it has an entrance oh, it's to not. the porch from Tampa. No, no, no. no. Okay, yeah. I'm just, yeah. But I'll, I'll show you the elevations, kind of explain it a little bit more. Um, let me just go on screen here. All right, um, 
Just to start out from the beginning, um, our request again is to rezone from RM16 to PD, and it's for two different type of uses, single family attached and then semi-detached. And that's mainly because of the definition in your zoning code. Um, attached says three or more units connected by a common sidewall, or as you can see, the units to the south would not be uh, fit that definition. They would fit the definition of the semi-detached, which is uh, two units that share a common side or rear wall. So that's why there's two different uses being proposed for this rezoning. Um, but just to orientate you, I know Zane already did that, but you have Tampa Street to your west, you have Gladys to your north, and then you're going to have Florida to the block to your east, okay? Um, specifically to the elevations, if you look down to number two at the bottom to uh, answer your question, so that's that wraparound porch going forward, and there's no door. Now, what we did do is, um, again, through extensive conversation with Tampa Heights Civic Association, we were trying to... In, uh, include design elements that would kind of break up that the fenestration of that to really activate that corner and we did it as much as possible with the wraparound porch some of the windows you see for instance the window to the right on west elevation number two that's actually the garage but if you look at the semi-detached to the south of that it almost is very reminiscent to the front of the building so again really trying to activate that frontage um, this is zoomed into the site. I kind of already explained um, the two type of uses. I'd be I'll answer any questions if you did have any questions on that. Um, but again, we took a proactive approach to this. We uh, proactively reached out to Tampa Pacific Association, um, went to their meetings, went to their committee meetings, uh, went through iterations of the site plan, um, and that's before we even actually applied. And then once we applied, we continued that process. Um, we kept them in the loop of our revised site plan that we resubmitted to the city to really incorporate any kind of elements that we could to work with the community. Um, we are, and I'll say it right now, and I'll, I'll say it at the end, but I'm happy to share that we do have their support. We received a letter from um, Mr. Seal and the Tampa Heights Civic Association. Um, I believe he submitted it to the record. And additionally, there's another letter of support from a neighbor on Euclid, which is just to the south of the subject site. Um, again, five single-family attached units, the ones to the north and then two uh, single-family semi-detached units, which are those units to the south. All units are accessed by the alley. Now, part of that alley is already paved, as you saw in that uh, previous um, presentation by Zane, and that's because of the, the, the multifamily to the south. So immediately to the south of the first half of this property, and I'll show you in pictures, is, is multi, it's not single-family. There's actually three units. There's a unit above the garage, and then there's uh, what Lazoni would call a two-family, a unit on the first floor and then the second floor. So I'm, uh, when they were built to the south, they improved obviously half of that alley to access the rear of the property. But what we're proposing here is obviously to extend that to the edge of our property. And as you'll see, so you'll enter off a of Tampa Street onto the alley, then you'll loop up north into our site. Again, all frontages are, are activated facing the corners, Tampa and Gladys. We're really trying to create that corridor. Um, additionally, you're not going to see driveway access, obviously, through uh, Gladys or Tampa Street. We wanted to eliminate that, and I appreciate Zane saying those are bushes between that drive aisle because that's exactly what they are. It's a VUA and a tree, actually. Um, so there's going to be trees and bushes and green, uh, green space, and it's the 8-foot VUA that were required by code, and we're meeting that. And again, that's to separate that and really keep the, the, uh, the frontages in, in, in unison and looking activating that Tampa Street. <clears throat> so that helps with pedestrian connectivity and obviously safety and everything else. Um, we are meeting the parking requirement and all other codes. We do have that one minor waiver, which I'll go into in a, in a moment. Uh, just briefly, the aerial. So again, you do have that existing church to the north. Um, you have single uh, multifamily to the south, to the west. There's single family to the south as well. Multifamily to your east. And again, the CN um, zoning district but with a church to your north and I have some other exhibits I'll show you to kind of go into that more um, the need for this PD I know that's a question that's going to be asked we are we are we are and ent we've entered into agreement um, as far as we could so far a bonus provision agreement to activate the 20 dwelling units per acre under the R20 category um, that's one of the main reasons for the PD and additionally the waiver that we we tried our best to design the site and not have any waivers but it's just it's come to this and it was really an offset between reducing VUA, a green space, or one foot nine inches of pavement. And I'll, I'll go into that a little bit more here in a second. Just to go over the uses as identified on Hillsborough County Property Appraiser, you have multifamily to the southern half or southwestern portion of our site. Then there's that single family. Um, immediately west of the site, you have uh, across Tampa Street, you have commercial, I believe it's an auto sales. And then further south of that is actually shuffle. I'm sure everybody knows where that is. Um, north of the commercial auto cells, which are to the, uh, the west side of Tampa Street, you have multifamily. And again, that's 
that's more of that two family scenario it looked like it looked like it was a unit on the bottom a unit on top so and then moving up you have multi multi-family directly north again the church north across gladys street there's multi-family then it transitions to single family um, but also that's the back of that zoning lot so uh, i think one of the pictures Zane showed was actually the, the rear of the structure um, so um, the the front facing would be on the street to the north immediately to our east we have multifamily um, in those structures this is uh the relatively new rezoning i just put it on screen it's it was rezoned to cn um, 2022 and i threw the ordinance number up there just because i'm an overachiever sometimes i guess um, <laughs> but that's immediately to our north so you know really uh, this is an urban environment i mean to floor when you go over to florida you're going to have a lot more commercial uses and obviously you have commercial uses along tampa street and you're going to have this mixture of single family attached semi-detached multi-family single family commercial um, all in unison together this is the comprehensive plan future land use map category just showing you our subject site is located in that r20 category and again we are trying to unlock that 20 dwelling units per acre through this bonus provision agreement now just to go into the waiver it comes from 27283.12 uh, jonathan section for transportation and it is to reduce the backup width um, we have specific measurements um, i know staff said from six feet to four feet but we're actually providing four foot three inches and uh, every little bit counts here so really the reduction that you were requesting is a one foot nine inches of pavement and what i did there was i outlined generally what one foot nine inches would look like in yellow and that's impeding on what would be an eight foot vua buffer so we in lieu of providing that we'd rather have an eight foot vua buffer which would support the trees and the plantings and that separation between tampa street and our internal drives and just if you don't want to take my word for it the vehicle there's 24 foot um a drive aisle from unit one which would be your upper left one i'm sorry i don't have my pointer on screen so i keep pointing on the screen it's not going anywhere um, but that's a that's auto turn that was generated to show that a vehicle can maneuver in this scenario with that four foot three inch backup so it's not the backup directly behind the unit that's 24 feet and typically you know uh, a standard car is around what eight by 15 and what we're showing on screen is actually 19 feet in length so if that vehicle can back up and it's 19 feet and show you an auto turn it could do it i'm sure a sedan which is you know 14 to 15 feet long can do it um, going on to the next slide um, so this just highlights two things on the site plan one the, the alley being paved to that 16 feet all the way to the edge of our property and then additionally up in the top right you're going to see all electric service is going to be underground and that's another part that we included in the bonus provision agreement we wanted to provide all utilities underground so you don't have all those power lines sticking up and then obviously uh, pave the alley which is um, obviously a big um, um, big thing for tampa heights we want to activate the alleys use the alleys have that rear access what I did here is I highlighted the green space and I, I do this honestly because it helps me out and I hope it helps you all see what we're providing and kind of get you connected to the project you're going to see each one of these units on the north have that pedestrian connection to their front door to the sidewalk on Gladys Street in addition on Tampa Street the two semi-detached units unit six and seven have the same thing and that's that area I left unhighlighted in green so again you have that pedestrian access only on the two corners but then, you know, another point to show you is on the northern, um, well, actually all the properties, they have these small little front yards, and that's to help, you know, generate more shade trees or more plantings, more green space. And again, we're providing all the required buffer, um, VUA space, parking, et cetera. And um, something cool in the design, I thought, was how the semi-detached units, uh, six and seven, have additional green space behind them. So really activating as much green space as that we could and just leaving the drive aisle to be surrounded by that. Now there's two slides and I promise I won't go through them because I'm sure you don't want to hear me go through two pages of comprehensive plan policies, but we agree with the planning commission on we meet several goals, objectives and policies of the comprehensive plan. Um, and those are outlined. I've submitted this PowerPoint to the record um, in case you wanted to see that. And just to go over some photos, um, this is looking north on Tampa Street. So you have that church there to the immediate north in the CN district. So on the right hand side of the screen is the existing structure on site. It is vacant. But then immediately south of it is that two family with that um, dwelling that's above the garage that you see there in the distance and then this is looking west i'm sorry east along gladys street you're going to see that single family attached development and then 
immediately to your um, east is those multifamily. They're existing structures, but they're being used as multifamily. Now, directly west, um, those aren't, uh, they are not single family. They are actually that two family scenario, too. There's a unit A and B for both of those. And then just to, re just to go over the, the staff reports, um, all review agencies, with the exception of transportation, have found us consistent. Um, that's in, in terms of compatibility and consistent with other codes. Again, our transportation waiver uh, threw us into that inconsistency for the one foot nine inch reduction. Um, we feel that we've proven you through not just Ryan saying it, but through auto turn that a car can function, even a 19 foot long car. Um, I'm sure a Mini Cooper wouldn't have any issue uh, back, backing, backing out and going in there. And then also, um, as I already stated, we do have the Tampa Heights Civic Association letter of support that was received and much appreciated. You know, we really um, appreciate their time that they spent with us. Um, we went back and forth a few times with design elements of this project to get the support. Um, just some highlights of that. You know, they say that we're proactively working with THC, uh, THCA and incorporate design elements that are in line with the intent of the Tampa Heights neighborhood plan and the Tampa Heights overlay, which was just recently adopted, right? Um, vehicular access and parking is orientated solely, uh, solely use uh, to the solely use the alley, um, which we've shown you there. And also, we um, provide uh, that'll help with the pedestrian minimizing uh, safety concerns as far as driveways cutting in and out of Gladys or and or Tampa Street. Also, they state that the pro proposed project uh, the project proposes density in line with the comprehensive plan, which we agree with. And um, an another factor of this PD was reducing the setbacks in order to achieve the better street activation. Um, and they were acceptable to the trade-offs, us getting some leniency on the waivers to produce this design that was compatible with the neighborhood. And lastly, they did state that the waiver should be granted because it allows trees to be planted between the sidewalk and the driveway. Um, so with that, I'll save any additional time for any questions you have, and, I, and we just re, re, uh, respectfully request your support in this. Councilman Quinzana. Yes, you thought you were in my head about the PDs, didn't you? But actually, this is exactly where we should be doing PDs. I think, I, you know, I wish I wanted, really wanted to tell you like 10 minutes ago, you could probably stop while you're ahead. Um, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a quick learner. Next time I'll, I'll the, I'm learning. Nice so. <laughs> yeah, the, well, I, you know, honestly, because this is, this is, I think it's a great project. And this is a long transportation corridors. We're trying to build density in these areas. I love your integration with the streets, your design elements with the streets. I mean, I, th I think I think it's I think it's it's a it's a home run, and I, th I think I really appreciate the fact that, you know, you took uh, you know, whoever developed this and whoever, this, whoever's idea. No, it wasn't yours, but the folks that did. I had input. Okay, the, fo <laughs> well, the, fo the folks that did. I, th I, I think they, maybe I, after. <laughs> I think they brought a good project forward, and I think this is one of the reasons. You know, when I look at why, I when I look at a PD, this is why we should be doing PDs. It it, it fits into this piece of property. We're redeveloping Tampa. We're repurposing. It's density where we want density along Tampa Street, Florida. Hopefully, we're going to have a streetcar coming just a couple blocks from there, you know. So we we, we and, and then a rapid bus transit system going up further north from that point to, to hit up the northern areas. So this is exactly what we want. So Great. thank you. Great. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. I was going to wait, but since you went ahead, I'm just going to say uh, it's been a great night for development and uh, approvals. We've, I mean, I'm really appreciative of. Uh, the developers who are obviously listening to what this council is saying. Um, and this, this is, it's a home run. It's an A plus. And it's interesting that you, in one of your pictures, you showed the single family attached on Gladys, not an A, not even a C. And mainly because there's just blank wall facing Florida Avenue. You absolutely, so, and they're just blank walls. So not, and that's another thing. I mean, design is subjective, but this actually includes some brick. It includes some movement. It includes, it really fits into the neighborhood. Porches, actual porches that you could probably put a chair on. I mean, I'm sorry, but, he, well, no, I, 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 I talk I with my hands, I, 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 I do. But, but I just wanna say um, uh, the corner porch, the alley, um, car access, Absolutely everything. Um, if I if we could get every developer to do what's being done, we would be a, a great be -er be city. Um, and we'd be, be but, out almost by 830 right now. Yeah. No, but I, I just, you know, yeah. we often talk about the things we don't like, so I feel it's really important it to give kudos when people take the time, obviously worked with the neighborhood. You already can't, you came with a solid plan, but they working with them made it even better. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you. You're very welcome. Yes, ma'am. No. All Great right. job. The thank you. Community spoke. 
was listened to. They Good. approve it. That's make, that, that makes it so much easier. Do you have anybody in the public that wishes to speak on this item? Wait, do we have, oh, I believe we have somebody registered online. Is it may be on? my client, Stephen Eskenazi. Is there a gentleman on the mat? Okay, we, we need uh, video, but it said here that it was in support of, supportive. So, wait, any uh, rebuttal, anything else? No rebuttal, thank you. All right, we have a motion closed from Councilwoman Henderson, second from Councilmember Vieira, all in favor? Aye. Aye, any opposed? Councilmember Vieira? Yes, sure. Uh, move an ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 2709. North Tampa Street in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in Section 1 from Zoning District Classification RM16. Residential multifamily to PD plan development, residential single family attached and semi attached, providing an effective date. Um, I find the applicant has met its burden of proof to provide competent and substantial evidence that the development as conditioned as shown on the site plan is consistent with the comprehensive plan and city code. And I find that the waivers don't, uh, to the extent, uh, don't adversely affect public health, safety, and uh, welfare. And I also adopt the findings and reasoning of the Planning Commission and the city staff reports. Okay. And revision. We have a motion from Councilmember Vieira with a second from Councilwoman Hertak. Uh, roll call vote, please. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Enthusiastic, yes. Hmm. More enthusiastically, yes. Henderson? Just a plain yes. Vieira? Yes. Meniscocco? The most enthusiastic, yes. <laughs> now we have a competition. Now. Motion carried unanimously. <laughs> Second reading and adoption will be held on November 2nd. 2023 at 9.30 a.m. at Old City Hall, located at 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, third floor, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Thank you very much. New Thank business, you, Councilman Council. Carlson. Um, we got a memo, oh, sorry. Um, we got a memo today that um, on the agenda next week, it, the um, EDC contract renewal is coming up. Um, I can go in a long explanation, but I would like to make a motion to uh, continue that until November 16th. That's SIRE item 84494. And the main reason is that the we need to be able to uh, measure the EDC's performance. They have not uh, been able to file their final report yet for the period that we're in. The final report will be on at the end of October, if we move to the next available meeting, which is November 16th, we'll be able to look at their performance. Uh, they've not hit the goals that they had promised in their contract, and we won't know whether they did or not by next week. So we need to move it into into November. Second. We have a motion for uh, that continuance request uh, from Council Member Carlson, second Councilwoman. Her attack, all in favor? Uh, well, uh, yes. Question on the motion, if I may. Um, is there anything like, um, uh, uh, have you checked, is there anything uh, uh, time limited by this, time certain? Um, there, there already, the, the contract already expired at the end of September. Mm -hmm. And so all we have to do is um, agree to pay them for the, it, um, it, I mean, there's also a question about the contract that it ran out, but it's also month to month and we haven't canceled it yet. So, so that um, nobody suffers any detriment. So all, or all we have to do, we already would have to backdate. We're already back covering them. So, okay, that's I fine. Question as well. How do you, how do you know they haven't fulfilled their obligation? Like what, uh, what do you, because they, Carlson. they, they send us quarterly reports uh -huh. and if you add up the numbers, that they were promised in the la that they promised in the last contract through the most recent quarterly reports they haven't hit their numbers yet, and uh, we won't know until we get the next quarterly report, which is due at the end of October. All right, we have a motion from Councilmember Councilmember Carlson, second from Councilwoman Hertek. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Anything the, else? Yeah. The the, uh, the other thing, real fast, is um, uh, you know, a couple nonprofit things I'm involved in. I just wanted you all to know, Cafe on Tampa tomorrow um, has. Uh, I didn't schedule this, but it has Jennifer Malone and also um, Stephen Benson. Um, 
if any of you would like to come, everybody's welcome every week. But if, if more than one of us is there, if you want to ask a question, I'll just leave. Next week also, again, I didn't ask, but uh, Bar uh, Chief Tripp will be presenting. Um, but it'll be interesting to hear the community. I think a lot of people are going to show up tomorrow. Also, um, this Ybor City Ad Hoc Arts Group that, that I'm a part of, if you go to Facebook and sign up for that, um, anybody is invited. It's the last Wednesday of every month. It's one of the most interesting creative events that you can attend. But next Thursday is there, it's the second annual um, art walk in Ybor City. And um, I think it's free, but you have to sign up for it online. It's a con it's a, it came out of this ad hoc art group, but it is a joint venture between HCC and Tempest. And they have a whole bunch of um, art. And I think it still includes um, uh, the, um, uh, the Yala Ford exhibit at HCC. So I just want to let you all know that everything that I'm involved in, you all are welcome to. I also want to say, sometimes people ask me why I show up in other districts and several of you showed up in South Tampa for the South of Gandhi meeting. And I know, all, I think all of you have been on a tour of South of Gandhy. Uh, uh, Council member Vieira came all the way from New Tampa to South of Gandhy. Oh, I, just, I just want to say that I appreciate that. <laughs> and if you all need me to come to anything in New Tampa or somewhere else, let me know. But I need you to know about my district because how can I advocate for it otherwise? So I please show I never see you in my district, but you always talking about it, though. That's so amazing. <laughs> we just don't go to the same places. <laughs> I'll invite you. Oh, Thank yeah. Thank you. It sounds good. <laughs> Councilwoman Hurtsman. Thank you. Um, I, I want to continue CM22-78127, uh, which is item number 88 on the October 19th agenda for nine months until July 17th. 2024 staff are working on it and need more time. Basically, it's a collection um, of all the properties that have liens and what, what we can do to either help people fix them up or possibly if, if there's no response, um, acquire them for uh, fixing up an affordable so housing. We have a motion from Councilman Hurtak, second Councilman Vieira, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anything else? No. Council member Pandana. Yeah, statement and then I have two motions. Uh, statement, I just want, I mentioned this today during the CRA meeting, um, you know, this past Saturday, since, since we last met as, as a council, uh, there was a terrible tragedy uh, by terrorists in Israel and a lot of people lost their lives. And there's a lot of folks in Tampa that have loved ones in Israel that are, you know, people that are missing or people that have been lost. And I just want to acknowledge that uh, I, I feel the pain and I feel the pain of the people of Israel and, and what they're going through. Um, and that I would like to move on to a motion. I motion a request by the Planning Commission to remove TACPA 2317 from the November 30th, 2023 at 501 Transmittal Public Hearing Agenda. We have a motion. We have a second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Yes, sir. And next one is a request by the Planning Commission to remove TACPA 2317 from the February 22nd, 2024 at 5.01 p.m. adoption public hearing agenda. We have a motion from Council Member Do we have a second? A second. A second from Council Member Hurtak. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Anything else? And yeah, it's the only thing I'll say is that normally I would have made a motion about what the statement that I made about Israel, but I just feel like, you know, our, our scope of reference in the City Council really is not foreign affairs. I just wanted to make my own personal uh, Thank statement you. about it and not necessarily you know call for any kind of a public motion because i don't really necessarily think that's within the scope of what we do in the city and, and i try to keep things relevant to to the city so thank, thank you. you sir yes ma'am yes chair thank you um i would like for us to move the um discussion on hiring a budget analyst for the city of tampa um october 26 councilwoman hertek and i will be at the um um uh, what's it called a conference FRA. the fra conference in um some other city and so I want to move move it to November 30th so we can be a part of the discussion for hiring so a budget we have, we have a motion from Councilwoman Henderson second from Councilmember Miranda all in favor uh, all right any opposed thank anything you else, ma that's it anything, anything sir uh, yes and, I, and it's actually not a motion per Is se it, okay it doesn't have to be just move the calendar yeah. I mean, change the calendar. We, it doesn't have to be a motion. No, 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 no he's talking about his own thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's all about you, Miss Henderson. You're I fine. Know, I know, because it's always about you. That is correct. <laughs> um, but thank you. You finally figured it out. Proceed. <laughs> Let's just get this over with. Thank you very much. I, it's funny, Councilman Clendenin mentioned the, the issue of, uh, of Israel. This is not dealing with Israel 
Um, I, I was requested um, by our friends at the um, Jewish, um, uh, uh, at the JCC Federation, their Jewish Community Relations Council, they wanted to do an amendment that um, to we had passed seven to zero a resolution on um, anti-Semitism maybe six or seven, eight months ago, and they wished to do an amendment that St. Petersburg recently passed, I think it was six to zero, and I'm gonna send it to city council uh, potentially for consideration next week. Maybe we amend the agenda, whatever. I, I first need to get my hands on it. Um, but it was requested by, among other folks, Gary Gould, Joe Probasco, a lot of different folks, uh, adopting the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance's definition of anti-Semitism. Uh, they had come to uh, me requesting this on, I guess it was Tuesday evening at the event at the uh, JCC um, on, on Israel. So I'll be, it, it may come next week, I gotta get my hands on it, but again, it doesn't deal with the foreign policy issue, more so dealing with a resolution that this council passed seven to zero, amending it for that definition. So it will be forthcoming um, once I get my hands on it, which should be, I, I, I think tomorrow, I believe I should, uh, from our friends over at St. Petersburg. So just FYI, so that's not a motion I'm making tonight, but I'll either have it, um, uh, added to the agenda, seek to with consent or the following week, but just out there. But it, it does not deal though with, um, with, the, with the issue. And again, we've all, I've, I've, I've made my statements on it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but uh, it's more narrowly tailored, I guess, if you will. Yeah, so if it's reference it. to the city of Tampa, I'm fully supportive of it. Of course. Yeah, things that are referenced to the city of Tampa. Yes, yes, sir. And I'm sure that it'll be seven to zero. Uh, but thank you very much, Council. Thank you very much. Council Member Miranda. I have two, sir. I'd like to make a motion to present a combination of Kevin Thornton an engineer for in the mobility department who is retiring after 38 years of dedicated service to the city of Tampa. I would like to make this presentation if possible on October 19, 2023. We have a motion from Councilmember Miranda. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from Councilwoman Hertak. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The second one, sir, I would like to make a motion to request as a Tampa Police Department to update the community policing innovation uh, program security and safety plan, including all areas of Ybor City, and to identify additional manpower and scheduling costs that may be needed. Second. We have Those a motion. additional costs should be recouped from the CRA, considering the budget restrictions in the recently approved general fund budget, and I believe it's an appropriate CRA cost, considering the safety of residents, businesses, and visitors, and visitors to the entire Ybor City area. If possible, I'd like to make this motion sometime in December. December. All right, let me uh, look here. We have to send them to make the presentation in December. The December 7th is a regular city council meeting, uh, or you have December 21st. Well, that's Christmas, too close. Yeah. Yeah. Seventh. Yeah. Seventh is fine. Yeah. All right, we have a motion from Councilmember Miranda for December 7th under staff reports, correct? Yes, sir. Right. We have a second from Councilwoman, oh, Hen yeah. Councilwoman Henderson with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And, and regarding the, the problem that uh, the, the slaughtering of individuals, babies, kids, anyone, I mean, what's happening in, in Israel is just, uh, in my opinion, may be a little bit more than what the surface shows. I think it's uh, two other major country, powerful countries. I want to divide the United States between helping Ukraine and helping Israel, and that's what they did it to weaken our power. That's what I think. But I appreciate uh, you. Your sincerity, Mr. Clendenin, what you said earlier today, and I, with you, 110 percent. Kudos. Yes, ditto. And I absolutely, uh, I agree, and, and and I appreciate your your comments. Um, you know, my wife is Jewish. My stepdaughters are raised Jewish. My, many of my close friends are Jewish. So, this is something that's very uh, personal. Um, and again, I appreciate it. May I have a motion to receive a file? So move. Motion from Councilwoman Henderson, second from Councilwoman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. We are